Thank you, Buling. Uh, Bu Sofi, go ahead. Oke, okay, teman-teman sekalian. Saya senang sekali ya kita bisa berjumpa pada malam hari ini buat teman-teman yang ada di Indonesia. Hari ini kita kedatangan tamu yang sangat spesial sekali, Daughter of Christ, untuk memberikan testimoni dan kesaksiannya bagaimana dia bisa uh, bertemu dengan Tuhan Yesus dan bisa percaya kepada Tuhan Yesus. Uh, kita berharap kesaksian Daughter of Christ kali ini menjadi suatu kesaksian yang luar biasa dan membuahkan jiwa-jiwa dan memberkati Indonesia. Uh, okay, Daughter of Christ, can you introduce yourself? Hello everyone, I hope you can hear me. My name is Daughter of Christ. Thank you for inviting me. It's my first time on your channel. Um, I know Sister Hatun has been here too. Um, I love to share how God saved me. This is why I'm here. Uh, okay. Thank you for inviting me. Oke, okay, ya tadi dia mengatakan uh, nama saya Daughter of Christ dan ini pertama kali saya ada di channel Indonesia dan dia tahu bahwa uh, Sister Hatun Tash minggu lalu sudah bersama-sama dengan kita dan dia sangat senang sekali untuk memberikan kesaksiannya pada malam hari ini. Go ahead, Sister. Um, so I'll just tell you a little bit about me. Um, I was uh, not saved because of anything good in me at all. Um, yes. Ya, saya mau cerita sedikit mengenai saya bahwa saya diselamatkan bukan karena kebaikan saya ya tidak ada sedikit pun yang baik dari dalam diri saya. Uh, I was born in a Sunni Muslim Arabic family. Saya dilahirkan di keluarga Sunni Muslim di Arab. Yeah, very normal family. Ya, keluarga uh, yang normal. Uh, we uh, at the time we loved Islam and uh, the Quran. Ya, pada waktu itu kami sangat mencintai Islam dan Quran. Um, I had extra lessons uh, with the Quran and Tajweed and also knew about the Hadith and Muhammad Sirah. Ya, jadi Daughter of Christ diberikan pelajaran khusus mengenai uh, Sirat, ya, mengenai Hadis, mengenai Quran. Yes, so uh, we followed very, very close, closely. Ya, dia jadi mempunyai uh, diajar dengan sangat ketat, ya. Uh, I had a loving family. I had a good life with my family. Uh, they allowed me to get educated and work. Ya, saya mempunyai keluarga yang sangat uh, baik ya dan sangat mengasihi saya. Mereka memberikan saya pendidikan yang uh, baik ya. Uh, but um, I was sad inside. I was miserable and I was afraid of death. Hmm, tetapi di dalam hati saya, saya sangat menderita. Uh, saya sangat sedih sekali dan saya sangat takut dengan kematian. And I know that if I died at that time I would have gone to hell. Dan saya tahu pada waktu itu kalau saya mati pada waktu itu saya pasti masuk neraka. Uh, as you know, anyone who doesn't have Christ in their life, they have a miserable life. Uh, saya meng mengetahui bahwa orang yang tidak mempunyai Kristus di dalam hatinya, mereka pasti mempunyai kehidupan yang sangat menderita. But also because in Islam, I, I ask for forgiveness a lot of the time, but I don't know if Allah forgive me or not. Dan juga saya tahu bahwa di dalam Islam, saya selalu banyak meminta ampun, ya meminta ampun kepada uh, Allah, tetapi saya tidak tahu apakah saya diampuni atau tidak. I pray and fast and I don't know if he'll accept your worship or not. Saya berdoa dan berpuasa, tapi saya tidak tahu apakah dia menerima saya atau tidak. And um, I don't know where I. No Muslim knows where they go after they die. Dan tidak seorang pun Muslim tahu kemana mereka akan pergi setelah mereka mati. Uh, so Allah gave me no peace in my heart, no happiness. Allah tidak memberikan kedamaian di dalam hati saya dan kebahagiaan di dalam hati saya. And uh, I asked myself, so what's the difference between me and an unbeliever? Jadi saya bertanya kepada diri saya sendiri, apa bedanya saya dengan orang-orang yang tidak percaya di sana? So, uh, I asked how to make it better as my family. Ya, saya meminta bagaimana caranya bisa menjadi lebih baik uh, di dalam they, dengan keluarga saya. They said read the Quran more and do more worship. Ya, mereka berkata, keluarga saya berkata, kamu harus lebih sering baca Quran dan lebih sering menyembah kepada Tuhan. But then when I read the Quran I felt worse. 
Tapi ketika saya membaca Quran, saya malah merasa bertambah lebih buruk. Because uh, the character of Allah in the Quran is very ugly. Hmm, karena karakter yang saya jumpai di dalam Quran adalah karakter yang sangat buruk. He says many times that he misguides people. Uh, Allah berkata di dalam Quran banyak uh, kali ya bahwa dia akan menyesatkan orang. And he says uh, in one of his ayahs, he says um, he could have guided everyone but he made a word from him that he will fill the hell with uh, humans. I'm sorry, daughter of Christ, can you yes, come again? He, I lost yes. you. Yes, he said, uh, he said, Allah said in a verse that he could have guided everyone. Mm-hmm. But uh, he pr- he promises that he will fill the health with the jinns and humans. Yeah, jadi Allah berkata di dalam ayat-ayatnya bahwa dia bisa saja sih uh, apa m- m- menggait atau apa uh, uh, apa yang nama memimpin semua orang gitu ya menunjukkan jalan kepada semua orang. Tetapi ternyata dia juga menempatkan orang-orang ini ke dalam neraka. And even the paradise, it's full of pleasures of the flesh, pleasures for the physical. Dia bahkan surganya Islam ya, surganya Islam itu penuh dengan kesenangan-kesenangan daging gitu, kesenangan-kesenangan duniawi. So that made me uncomfortable. Itu membuat saya jadi tidak nyaman. And I knew that I had sins in my heart uh, that I need to uh, get rid of, change. Saya tahu di dalam hati saya saya harus melepaskan uh, rantai ikatan ini. But Allah in the Quran says you have to change your own self. He doesn't do it for you. Oh, tadi dia mengatakan bahwa saya harus uh, merubah gitu, berubah ya. Tetapi Allah di dalam Quran mengatakan kamu harus merubah diri kamu sendiri. So uh, that's in Surah 13 verse 11 just in case people want to know. Oke, okay, kalau teman-teman mau <laughs> tahu itu ada di ya surah 13 ayat first uh, 11 ya ayat 11. Yeah, 11. Yeah. So I I found that I was going in circles, going round and round. Uh, Jadi saya merasa saya tuh hanya berputar-putar saja ya. Yeah, salah after salah, prayer after prayer. Doa, uh, kemudian doa, doa lagi. Yes, no change. I was still afraid, still miserable. Tidak ada perubahan, saya tetap takut, saya tetap menderita. So I decided that I needed to take some action. Jadi saya memutuskan saya harus mengambil suatu tindakan. So I dis, um, decided that uh, Allah is far away from me because of my sins. I have to get rid of all my sins. Jadi saya berpikir bahwa Allah itu sangat sangat jauh dari saya karena dosa-dosa saya. Jadi saya pikir saya harus membuang nih semua dosa-dosa saya. So in Islam you can do that you can go straight to paradise if you die in battle for the sake of Allah for men. Ya, yeah, jadi kalau di dalam Islam kamu bisa langsung pergi ke surga, ke jannah gitu ya. Kalau kamu tuh mati di dalam peperangan itu untuk laki-laki. So I can't do that. Jadi saya enggak bisa lakukan itu. And um, in Hajj you can have your sins forgiven uh, if you finish the rituals. Iya, kalau uh, di dalam haji kamu juga bisa uh, diampuni dosa-dosamu kalau kamu sangat-sangat rohani. Yes, it says in hadis that if you you come back from haji, you come as a baby with no sins. Ya, di dalam hadis dikatakan bahwa kalau kamu sudah pulang dari pergi haji, kamu tuh seperti bayi yang baru lahir kembali yang enggak ada dosanya. So I went to Hajj. Jadi saya pergi haji. And I was shocked to see people pushing each other and hurting each other and screaming because of the crowds. Jadi saya sangat terkejut waktu naik haji bahwa orang tuh saling dorong-dorongan, saling teriak-teriak gitu ya di sana dan uh, saling apa ya, pokoknya suasananya tidak nyaman di keramaian itu. And I saw them pulling the curtains or, uh, on the Kaaba and robbing the Kaaba. Jadi saya melihat mereka menarik-narik uh, kain yang ada di, di Kaabah itu dan memegang atau mengusap-ngusap Kaabah itu. And they were fighting to get to the black stone to kiss it. Mereka saling berebut gitu ya, berebut untuk uh, mencapai batu hitam itu untuk menciumnya. So I said, okay, I paid a lot of money. I need to push as well to do the same because <laughs> I paid a lot. <laughs> 
Ya, oke. Okay. Jadi Daughter of Christ mengatakan saya juga udah bayar mahal nih untuk naik haji. Jadi oke okay dah saya saya akan dorong-dorongan juga nih desak-desakan <laughs> supaya saya bisa pegang batu hitamnya juga katanya gitu. <laughs> um, but God worked at that time and I just stopped and I said, what am I doing? This is so crazy. This madness. Iya, yeah, jadi Tuhan menghentikan saya pada waktu itu dan saya berpikir, apa yang sedang saya lakukan? Ini 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 gila nih. Uh, I I said I did I didn't want to push other people and do that all that. Saya berkata saya nggak pengen mendorong orang lain gitu ya dan mencium batu hitam itu atau melakukan hal itu. It just it seemed very very strange to me uh, going round and round and um, when you get around the Kaaba there's a, a corner that you have to raise your arm to it called the Rukn Yameni. Ya, menurut saya ini sangat nggak masuk di akal ya. Saya putar, putar, puterin ke abah, kemudian ada sudut di situ dan saya harus mengusap. And uh, you have to run between two mountains quickly and it just seemed very strange to me. Dan kamu harus berlari di antara dua bukit dan itu kayaknya saya merasa sangat aneh sekali saya harus melakukan itu. And I said to Allah, I don't understand why you need to see all this to forgive us. Dan saya berkata kepada Allah gitu ya, kenapa ka, kamu menginginkan saya untuk melakukan ini untuk mengampuni dosa saya gitu? Because I'm still the same inside. Karena di dalam diri saya, saya masih tetap merasa sama. So how come you want to see us running and pushing each other to forgive us? Jadi kenapa Allah menginginkan saya untuk saling dorong-dorongan, desak-desakan dan lari-lari seperti ini dan putar-puterin Ka'bah? Uh, I also um, because I have been to the west I've seen Hindu Hindu people do the same thing to touching and rubbing the idols. Saya karena saya juga pergi ke barat gitu ya. Saya juga tahu nih orang Hindu juga melakukan yang sama. Mereka juga mengusap-ngusap uh, berhala mereka ya, patung-patung berhala mereka. So uh, I started rebelling against Allah in my heart. Jadi saya mulai memberontak terhadap Allah di dalam hati saya. Uh, I came back from Hajj and I was worse. I was more miserable. Saya pulang dari Haji dan keadaan saya bertambah sangat buruk. Saya sangat menderita. And um, I, it was clear to me that because Allah says He misguides people, that He has misguided me too. Dan uh, saya percaya pada waktu itu karena Allah itu katanya menyesatkan orang dan saya percaya Dia juga sudah menyesatkan saya. So I rebelled more against him and I said you don't know what human life is like you're on the throne you don't know. Jadi saya memberontak terhadap Tuhan pada waktu itu dan saya berkata kamu tuh enggak tahu kehidup, uh, apa-apa tentang kehidupan manusia gitu kamu hanya duduk-duduk aja di tahtamu. So obviously now I know that he knows what it's like to be human because he he sent you know Jesus Christ he's God in the flesh. Ya. Yeah. Tapi sekarang saya tahu uh, bahwa dia itu tahu bagaimana kehidupan manusia ya karena dia sudah mengutus Yesus Kristus di dalam uh, tubuh seorang manusia. But I didn't know that at the time. Tapi pada waktu itu saya tidak tahu. Uh, so I just gave up on God completely. Jadi saya udah menyerah deh sama Tuhan sepenuhnya. Um, but uh, at the time God started working again in my life. Um, I had a baby and the family was born my my nephew. Ya pada waktu itu Tuhan bekerja lagi di dalam hidup saya ada seorang bayi yang lahir dan itu adalah keponakan saya. And I the first time that I loved a, a human being more than myself. Ya itulah pertama kalinya saya mengasihi uh, manusia lebih daripada mengasihi saya. And um, one day I thought I wish Allah loved me as much as I love this baby. Dan saya berpikir pada waktu itu saya berharap Tuhan juga mengasihi saya seperti saya mengasihi bayi ini. And that's when I realized that God of Islam is not true. Ya, pada waktu itu saya menyadari bahwa Allahnya orang Islam itu ternyata bukanlah uh, Allah yang sejati. Because how can I love more than God can love? Sebab bagaimana mungkin saya bisa mencintai uh, lebih daripada Allah mencintai manusia? Because I wanted to give that baby everything. I wanted him to always feel my love and be happy and Uh, be close to him, but Allah couldn't do the same for me. 
Karena saya pingin bayi ini yang saya kasih ini keponakan saya ini saya pengen membahagiakan dia, saya pengen uh, memenuhi semua kebutuhan dia. Tap, dan tapi bagi saya pengen selalu dekat dengan keponakan saya ini bayi ini. Tapi bagaimana mengapa Allah tidak pengen melakukan hal yang sama kepada saya? So uh, I asked God for the truth directly. I said I want the I want you to show me yourself the truth where the truth is. Jadi saya meminta kepada Allah secara langsung pada waktu itu saya katakan tunjukkan pada saya kebenarannya tunjukkan pada saya langsung mana yang benar. Yes. So um, one day I was online and I clicked on a debate between Muslim and a Christian. Nah suatu hari saya uh, lagi online gitu ya saya melihat debat antara Islam dan Kristen. And I heard the Christian talk about Jesus Christ with so much conviction and power and he had no doubt at all and he looked very confident. Dan pada waktu itu saya melihat orang Kristen ini bercerita tentang Yesus Kristus dengan penuh keyakinan tanpa ragu-ragu. And um, he had the look on his face of someone who knows knows where he's going after death. Dan di mukanya tuh saya melihat bahwa orang ini orang Kristen ini tahu kemana dia akan pergi pada waktu dia mati nanti. No, no Muslim has that look of being uh, sure where he goes after death. Tidak ada Muslim yang mempunyai muka seperti itu yang sangat yakin, yang begitu yakin dia akan pergi kemana setelah dia mati. And he also said to the Muslim that even in the Quran, Jesus is called the Word of Allah. Dan orang Kristen ini berkata bahkan di dalam Quran Yesus itu disebut Firman Ya Allah. Uh, and the Word of God is eternal. So Jesus must be eternal. Dan karena firman Allah itu kekal, maka Yesus juga kekal. And if he's eternal, then it must be that he's God. Dan kalau dia kekal, artinya dia pastilah Tuhan. And to me that was a logical point and it opened my mind. Menurut saya itu sangat masuk akal ya, masuk logika dan membuka pikiran saya. And I started reading uh, online very simple things about Jesus Christ. Dan saya mulai membaca secara online hal-hal yang uh, sederhana saja tentang Yesus Kristus. Uh, that he came to uh, carry our sins, that are the barrier between us and God. Dia datang untuk menebus dosa kita, yaitu penghalang antara kita dengan Tuhan. And that made sense because I wanted to remove my sins by Hajj, because I, I, God had led me to the thinking that the, they are the barrier. So I understood. Dan itu masuk akal buat saya ya, karena saya sendiri ingin menyingkirkan dosa saya ini yang menjadi penghalang antara saya dengan Tuhan dengan cara berhaji. Jadi buat saya, 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 saya sangat mengerti apa yang dia katakan. I knew that I tried to get rid of my sins and I failed. Saya tahu saya mencoba menyingkirkan dosa saya ini dan saya gagal melakukannya. Uh, and so when they said that no one can do it except through Christ, then I thought, okay, maybe that's true. Dan dia mengatakan bahwa tidak seorang pun yang dapat melakukannya ya, menyingkirkan dosa ini kecuali Yesus Kristus. Dan saya berpikir pada waktu itu, mungkin saja itu hal itu benar. But I needed to be sure as well. Um, before I took that step, I wanted to be 100% sure. Ya, tapi saya harus sangat yakin tentang hal ini. gitu ya. Sebelum saya melakukan suatu langkah berikutnya, saya harus 100% yakin bahwa Yesus ini benar-benar bisa menyingkirkan dosa saya. So someone online said if you're not sure ask Jesus himself. Ya seseorang di di online itu berkata kalau kamu enggak yakin kamu tanya sendiri kamu minta sendiri kepada Yesus kamu berdoa sendiri kepada Yesus. So I did it as an experiment to see <laughs> what would happen if I ask Jesus himself. Oke, okay, jadi saya melakukan satu percobaan ya eksperimen. Apa yang terjadi kalau saya minta langsung kepada Tuhan Yesus? So I went down on my knees and um, I asked, I said, uh, Jesus, if you are like what the Christians are saying, then please show me. Jadi saya berlutut dan saya berkata kepada Yesus, Yesus, kalau engkau itu benar-benar seperti yang orang-orang Kristen itu katakan, tunjukkan kepada saya. And I still can't uh, fully describe this moment. I felt a lot of warmth in my chest. And all the darkness inside me disappeared. Dan saya enggak 
uh, bisa menggambarkan dengan tepat ya apa yang terjadi pada diri saya waktu itu. Seakan-akan uh, ada perasaan yang hangat di dalam diri saya, kemudian kegelapan yang ada di, diri, di dalam diri saya itu uh, seakan-akan menyingkir keluar dari diri saya. Uh, all the sadness was gone, the fear was gone. I was happy. I don't know why I'm happy. I was at peace. I felt complete and I felt brilliant peace and love. Ya, yeah, tiba-tiba uh, perasaan sedih, perasaan uh, kesedihan saya itu pergi dan saya tiba-tiba dipenuhi dengan sukacita dan kedamaian. Saya enggak tahu kenapa saya bisa bersukacita pada waktu itu, tapi saya merasa uh, penuh ya, saya merasa utuh kembali dan saya merasakan kedamaian yang luar biasa. And I was I was shocked because I was still Muslim at the time technically. Dan saya sangat terkejut pada waktu itu saya nggak tahu apa yang terjadi karena secara teknis saya waktu itu masih orang Islam. And I said, wow, yes, Jesus is right. This is right. And I was jumping. I was so happy that I found that the answer. Yeah, saya kemudian lompat, lompat, lompat uh, suka cita gitu ya. Karena wow, Yesus ini benar ternyata nih, benar-benar nih, real gitu ya. Dan saya lompat suka cita pada waktu itu. So I uh, went and I bought a Bible and I read it. Jadi um, saya pergi dan saya membeli so- sebuah uh, Alkitab dan saya membacanya. I was so amazed. I saw the difference between the the real words of God and the nonsense that was before in the Quran. <laughs> Dan saya sangat uh, apa merasakan sesuatu yang amazing gitu ya, sesuatu yang luar biasa. Saya bisa melihat perbedaan antara mana yang betul-betul firman Allah dan mana yang cuma omong kosong doang. It was very easy to understand. It flowed logically. It was deep and meaningful. It had context. Um, not like the Quran that jumped from verse to verse, subject to subject, with no context, no detail, and no links. Ya, jadi saya pada waktu membaca Alkitab, ya, saya sangat uh, terkejut sekali, ya, karena ternyata sangat runtut urutannya, ya, sangat kronologis, gitu, ya, uh, mudah diterima akal. Saya sangat membaca, uh, membaca dengan mudah sekali ketika saya membaca Alkitab, tidak seperti uh, Quran yang ayat-ayat satunya itu lompat-lompat dan tidak dalam urutan uh, yang uh, benar, gitu, ya. Jadi sangat susah dimengerti uh, Qurannya itu. And I saw the love of God that He wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, not like Allah who misguides people, des- predestines people to hell. Ya, ketika saya membacanya, saya melihat kasih Allah yang luar biasa, gitu ya, kepada kita, bukan seperti Allah yang sudah menakdirkan kita untuk uh, apa tersesat ya atau uh, sia-sia hidupnya. And He says that He changes the heart. Uh, it says if anyone is in Christ Jesus he's a new, he's a new creation not like Allah who said he couldn't change my heart ya yeah, dan dia berjanji untuk uh, bisa merubah hati kita karena dikatakan di dalam Alkitab bahwa di dalam Kristus kita adalah ciptaan yang baru manusia yang baru uh, tidak seperti Allah di dalam uh, Quran dia tidak bisa merubah uh, hati saya and that God came down to earth which is what Allah never did. He he came down to die for me, but Allah wanted people to die for him to save to save them. It was opposite. Ya. Yeah. Ya, yeah, jadi di dalam Alkitab uh, Allah atau Tuhan itu sendiri turun, ya, turun ke dalam dunia uh, tidak seperti uh, Allah di dan uh, Allah Allah di dalam Alkitab itu turun ke dalam dunia menjadi manusia sama seperti kita dan mati buat saya. Tetapi Allah di dalam Quran dia tidak pernah uh, datang ke dalam dunia ini dan dia justru meminta kita mati buat dia. And uh, when Jesus Christ uh, says I no longer calls you slaves but friends when in Islam I was a slave uh, who doesn't know what my master will do to me after death but Jesus calls me friends and calls me beloved. Ya, yeah, jadi di dalam Alkitab Yesus menyebut kita kamu bukan lagi hamba tetapi sahabat-sahabatku. Tetapi di dalam uh, di dalam Islam saya adalah hambanya Allah gitu. Dan seorang hamba itu tidak tahu apa yang tuanya lakukan. And I realized the lies that they told us in Islam that uh, Jesus and Muhammad are like the same, they're prophets. That's not true. Jadi saya dulu dikasih tahu ya bahwa Yesus dan Muhammad itu uh, adalah seorang nabi. Jadi Yesus itu sama aja tuh dengan Muhammad, hanya seorang nabi dan itu tidak benar. Yes, they lie. Jesus Christ is sinless, 
Whereas Muhammad's life is full of battles and women and slaves and um, he took people's money from the war uh, for himself. Yeah. Well, Jesus never did any of that. Mm -hmm. Tapi itu tidak benar ya. Jadi Yesus uh, bahkan di dalam Quran itu adalah tanpa dosa ya. Dia tidak pernah berdosa. Tetapi Muhammad itu dikatakan uh, mempunyai dosa ya. Dia juga uh, melakukan peperangan, mengambil uang, gitu ya, menjarah uh, dan uh, itulah perbedaan Yesus dan uh, Muhammad di situ. And I realized um, that Muhammad just made up a religion. He made made it all up, and it has nothing to do with God. And that Jesus is the true one that to follow. Jadi saya menyadari pada waktu itu Muhammad itu membuat agamanya sendiri ya dan uh, dan itu tidak benar ya dan saya menyadari bahwa Yesuslah ada adalah kebenaran dan saya harus mengikuti dia. And I felt the heaviness of my sin that I denied Jesus all my life and every time I prayed towards the rock in Mecca it hurt the heart of God. Dan saya merasakan betapa beratnya dulu ya uh, apa penghalang saya ya. Uh, pada waktu uh, saya masih di, di Islam gitu ya, pada waktu saya berdoa menghadap uh, batu hitam itu, saya tahu betapa beratnya dosa saya dan itu menghalangi saya dengan uh, dengan Tuhan. And I understood why Jesus had to die because I couldn't carry all this heavy sin, but he he did, and um, I cried, you know, I was broken and I was sorry. Ya, jadi saya tahu betapa beratnya dosa saya waktu itu dan saya mengerti kenapa Yesus harus datang untuk Uh, menebus dosa saya ya dan saya waktu itu menangis gitu ya dan minta ampun and i thank jesus for taking my sins from me and i repented to him and he accepted dan, me ya dan saya uh, berdoa kepada yesus ya untuk mengampuni saya saya uh, bertobat dari segala dosa-dosa saya dulu dan dia menerima saya dia mengampuni saya And I was, yeah, I was finally free, and I have been, I've been happy since that time. Saya akhirnya merasakan kemerdekaan, kebebasan, dan saya sangat bahagia sejak waktu itu. Yes, that's how the Lord saved me. Ya, itulah bagaimana Tuhan menyelamatkan saya. Yes. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Uh, that's how the Lord saved me. That was uh, a few years ago, about four years ago. Okay. Few years ago, yaitu beberapa tahun lalu, and, pada waktu um, Tuhan menyelamatkan saya. Yes, and uh, ever since that time, um, I've just grown in um, knowledge of uh, God and with reading, and uh, God had gave me um, a chance to get to know Sister Tun. Ya, dan uh, sudah beberapa lama ini ya saya bertumbuh di dalam firman Tuhan untuk lebih mengenal siapa Tuhan itu dan uh, menghubungkan saya dengan uh, sister kita ya Hatun Tash. Yes, yes, he gave me a chance to um, talk about him. So, um, now all I want is to tell Muslims what I discovered, what I found. Ya, Sister Hatun memberikan kesempatan bagi saya untuk menceritakan uh, tentang Yesus kepada orang-orang Muslim. Yes, because Islam is just like all the other religions on earth. The 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 devil uses them to um, get people away from the real God. Jadi Islam sama saja seperti agama-agama lain di dunia ini yang mencoba menarik kita dari kebenaran akan Tuhan yang sejati. Yes. Okay, sister. Uh, I think your experience uh, a newborn, born again Christian. Yeah, that's how yeah. how I feel. I was uh, <laughs> I was born again Christians. Suddenly, the joy and the peace come into me, and I don't know. It's just like loving coming out from me, and yeah, I, I never it. experienced that before. And I believe in in that. Uh, so now you're taking a Q and A right now, okay. or yes, yes, if you uh, like to ask or okay, uh, teman-teman bisa uh, mau komunikasi mau mau tanya silakan. Oke, okay, uh, go ahead, Pak Bagus, silakan. Ya, yeah, uh, hello, uh, sis Doctor of Christ. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to uh, meet you too. Uh, I want to uh, ask you uh, about two two question. Okay. Yes. Uh, number one. Uh, number one. Uh, who or what is Allah? Who? And number two. Who is what? Sorry. Uh, and Yeah, who or what is Allah? Al who is Allah? 
Oh, yeah. oh okay. Okay, number two. Uh, why he in he in the Bible? Ultimately, in the Muslim majority area. Oh, why is the name Allah in the Bible? Yeah, why he in the Bible? Why he in the Bible? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, who who is who is Allah? Um, Allah is the name of the Arab God. Um, it, that was at the time of Muhammad. Okay, he, he jadi had, tadi, yeah, wait a minute, sister. Jadi Pak Bagus tadi bertanya siapa itu Allah dan uh, Daughter of Christ mengatakan uh, Allah adalah uh, nama Tuhannya uh, Muhammad ya pada zamannya Muhammad. And at the time they had lots of gods and Allah was the main, the top one. Okay, pada waktu itu mereka mempunyai uh, banyak uh, Tuhan ya, banyak berhala dan Allah adalah berhala yang paling tinggi. So he was the pagan head god. Allah adalah uh, kepalanya, pala berhala. And uh, the reason we know that is they had another god called Alet. Uh, alasannya kenapa kita bisa tahu itu? Karena mereka mempunyai uh, berhala lain atau dewa lain yang disebut alat. Yes, alat. Um, so when Muhammad came, he removed all the other gods and he kept the main the, the main one. Ya pada waktu Muhammad datang, ya dia menyingkirkan berhala-berhala yang lain, tetapi uh, tet apa? Menyisakan satu. Um, the word for uh, god in Arabic is ilah. Kata yeah. untuk Tuhan di dalam bahasa Arab adalah ilah. That's why the shahada is la ilaha illallah. No ilah except Allah. Karena itu syahadat di dalam Islam berkata la ilaha illallah. Tidak ada, tu, tidak ada ilah atau Tuhan selain Allah. So the word for God is ilah. Jadi uh, kata untuk Tuhan adalah ilah. Um, the second question is why is he in the Bible? Dan pertanyaan kedua kenapa kata Allah itu ada di dalam Alkitab? Because when the Arabs came to uh, our countries, uh, the Islamic invasions. Karena ketika Arab, uh, Arab masuk ya ke negara kita melalui satu invasi atau penyerangan, they use the word Allah at for God. Uh, mereka menggunakan kata Allah ini untuk uh, menggantikan kata Tuhan. So they change it changed the language. Uh, so when they came to translate the Bible, they use the word Allah for God wrongly. In my opinion. Jadi mereka, okay. Jadi mereka berubah bahasanya uh, dan mereka memasukkan ini di dalam Alkitab. Nah, itu menurut pendapat saya ya. Yes, the word for God is not Allah because God can have a plural. You can have, you can say gods, but Allah doesn't have a plural. It's a name. Iya, yeah, karena kata untuk uh, Tuhan itu bukan Allah ya. Karena uh, kalau Allah itu bisa dalam bentuk jamak juga ya, Tuhan Tuhan. Tetapi Allah ini nggak punya bentuk jamaknya. But actually, when you go to the manuscripts, um, you know, with the original uh, Hebrew and Greek languages, there's no name for God called Allah. His name is Yahweh. Ya, yeah, tetapi kalau kita bicara kembali kepada manuskrip Alkitab ya, di dalam bahasa Ibrani atau di dalam bahasa Yunani, uh, nama Tuhannya itu bukan Allah ya, tetapi uh, Yahweh. So if Allah was the uh, the the God of the whole universe. If that's his name, you would expect to find it in the um, in in the previous scriptures, but he isn't there because he is the local Arab God. Ya, kalau Allah ini adalah uh, Tuhan yang universal ya, uh, atau sang pencipta alam semesta, uh, pasti kita akan menemukan namanya juga di dalam kitab-kitab sebelumnya. Tetapi ternyata tidak ya. Jadi Allah ini adalah dewa lokal yang ada di uh, Arab. So even if Muslims say the Bible was corrupted, no one would change the name of God. There's no need to change that name. So Allah's name should have been in the Bible, but it's not. Ya, jadi sekalipun Muslim berkata Alkitab ini sudah dikorupsi ya atau diubah dan sebagainya, tetapi ya tidak ada alasannya untuk merubah nama Tuhan. Untuk apa merubah nama Tuhan di kitab-kitab sebelumnya? I hope that answers your question, brother. Hmm, saya harap itu menjawab pertanyaan uh, Pak Bagus. Apakah sudah terjawab, Pak? Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, but I think uh, the word uh, Allah uh, translated for God is only in Arabic Bible and also also Indonesian Bible. But in another mm -hmm. Bible, we don't find uh, the word yeah. Allah, right, sister? Yes, yes. Um, it's I think it's because of the 
um, constraints of language because of um, when the Arabs came to like your country and our country, when they invaded us, they uh, forced their language on us. So people had different names for God, but they, you know, they said, no, he must call him Allah. And over centuries, that's the name. So if you want, to, if actually I understand, because if you want to tell people Allah, like, sorry, if you want to tell people God, they don't know him by any other name. So translators have to use that name. So people know what you're talking about. But he was yeah. ne it was never the real name of God. Yeah. Okay. I, I think it's also uh, the, the, the difference between uh, Allah in the Bible is just a title, but Allah in the uh, Quran is a proper name. Yeah, uh, Allah is a name. Okay. Not not that not the word for God. It's a name. Like you know, your name is Sophia. That's his name. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a mm. name. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, Supatiki, silakan. Okay. Let Let me just clarify what he said earlier. I think what he meant was, why is it in every majority country? Where there's the the Muslim become the majority, Allah is in the Bible. That's just my clarification. But secondly, uh, I just want to ask. So, uh, what wh what's the best, in your opinion, to answer for people that say, Allah is has become, let's say it's become the language of the native land, like it, it's accepted. We we don't know anything else to it say so yes Allah is the language but in fact is there's plenty of ways to call him but they just refuse it's just that this is it I mean it's always been like that but it's wrong but it's it's always been like so it's like something that's been wrong in the past but well, well let's just put up with it let's not correct it everybody knows what that means yes what do you say to that I I agree, brother. I think um, even now as an Arab, uh, I call God, I call him ar rab you know, the Lord. Uh, or uh, I say al ilah the God. Um, I think it doesn't matter how long something is going on. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Especially when it comes to God, you know, that you should, is he, that's not his name. But I think the more important thing is um, because if you keep that name in the Bible and then you have the word Allah in the Quran, people think it's the same person. That's the problem when it's not the person, whoever the Allah in the Quran is, that's not God. His character is different. The way he acts is different. His heart is different. They're opposites. So I think there's a confusion if you call them the same name. But if, if people say the person who created the heaven and earth, who is that? And the only name they have for him is Allah. Then I would start explaining. And when they get to the level, say, OK, that's not his name. His name is Yahweh, not Allah. When they under, when you know to get them to understand, but I think we we should start to change it. Okay, jadi daughter of Christ tadi setuju ya kalau memang Allah ini sebenarnya bukanlah uh, proper name daripada uh, Tuhan di dalam Alkitab. Ya kita harus mulai pelan-pelan uh, merubahnya ya. Tetapi sebagai uh, orang Arab tadi daughter of Christ menyebut Tuhan itu dengan Al Ilah ya atau Rab. Jadi uh, itu sebenarnya uh, kata yang tepat ya Tuhan atau Al Ilah. Uh, jadi kita harus merubahnya pelan-pelan uh, dan uh, kalau kita melihat karakter Allah di dalam Alkitab dan Quran yang sangat berbeda ya uh, karakternya berbeda aslinya uh, apa uh, action atau tindakannya Allah di dalam Quran dan Allah di dalam Alkitab itu sangat berbeda sekalipun uh, nama Allah ini juga ada di dalam Alkitab sebagai gelar seperti itu uh, silakan Pak Polandia Supatiki masih ada yang mau ditanyakan sorry Supatiki, do you have any more question? Halo, Supatiki. Supatiki. Oke, okay, silakan Pak Polandi. I have a question regarding uh, Muslims claim claims about uh, the prophecies fulfilled in Quran. So uh, the first one would be suratul surat surat tarum mm -hmm. uh, verse number two. So the so uh, is this verse talking about uh, the verse sent down after 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 uh, the Romans were defeated or before 
the Romans were defeated. Okay, that, that's mm -hmm. the first one. And then the second one, the second verse would be uh, chapter 79, verse 30, about the word, uh, regarding the word, dahaha. So does it really mean, uh, does the word really mean uh, an ostrich egg as claimed by uh, Zakir Naik? Thank you. Surah 79 verse 3, sorry, uh, brother. Is that uh, the one? 79 verse 30. Oh, 30. Uh, the high, high, yeah? yeah, yeah, he spread. Yeah, yeah um, the first one, the Roman prophecy, it's not a prophecy at all because um, at the right. time, the Romans, um, um, they, they were they were defeated uh, they had so many battles between them sometimes they will be defeated and sometimes they will be um winners so to say mm. that they will be defeated and then they will win that's no prophecy um mm. and actually if, if you go back in history um it, the verse says fi, fi sinin, in a few years the word buddha in arabic is from um years three to nine um but oh. actually that that, that prophecy if it happened it actually came much much later it wasn't it wasn't in a few years um and also um it's like saying you know if you have two football teams mm -hmm. like we have two big football teams you know each season one of them wins or the other so Correct. if i say so if i say i prophesy that um uh, in a few years this this big football team liverpool. will win and then the other will win liverpool will win or manchester United will win. it's one of the two <laughs> so it's no real prophecy at all and actually brother as you know um the word huzimat um if you change correct, the correct. Tashki tashkil it becomes hazamat which means the opposite it means to um mm. to become the winner huzimat means defeated so the quran didn't have the tashkils so the skills were late, added later. Mm. So oh, you see, so you, this could be changed. Oh, so you mm. mean the word Huzimat and Hasamat? It could be the Roman is the winner or the Roman can lose? You mean both? Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Huzimat means um, they were defeated. Hazamat means they are the winner. It oh. means the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> Hazamat and Huzimat. So it's the same letters, but you know the skill on top? That's yeah. different. So, but in the, uh, in the time of Muhammad, there were no tashkil at all. There was no tashkil. There wasn't even dots. Okay. Okay. There wasn't even dots. Okay. They were added um, much, much later. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so, that, so that's not a prophecy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, sir, can I sorry, say sister, of course? Go. Yeah. Yes, Pak Polandia tanya mengenai nubuatan di dalam uh, Quran ya, salah satunya di surat Arum, Arum 2 tadi ya, Arum ayat 2. Apakah Muhammad benar-benar menubuatkan kemenangan uh, Roma gitu ya? Apakah orang Roma ini benar-benar menang? Uh, Dr. of Christ menjawab itu dinubuatkan setelah uh, uh, apa beberapa tahun ya setelah peristiwa itu terjadi dan kalau uh, dinubuatkan itu juga uh, kalau ada dua orang pihak yang uh, berperang, pasti salah satu ada yang kalah, salah satu yang menang dan pada waktu zaman Muhammad itu kan hurufnya gundul semua huruf Arab gundul. Tadi Dr. of Christ menjelaskan ada perbedaan kata husimat dan hasamat. Tadi bisa menang bisa kalah gitu dan kita nggak tahu yang mana karena pada zaman Muhammad itu belum ada huruf hidupnya, belum ada titik-titik uh, tashkilnya itu. Oke, okay, go on. Mister Polandi, yeah, sorry. Have any more sorry the word sorry the word is uh, ghalibat and ghalibat ya. Yeah? Ghalibat and ghalibat. Oh, okay. Ghalibat and ghalibat ya. Yeah? Uh, sorry, the other the other verse you asked was um, the one about the spreading of the earth, seventy nine verse three. Uh, yeah, True. the haha means to sp to spread. So does it have anything to do with the ostrich egg? No. <laughs> No. Oke. Oke. Kalau dia tanya tuh di dalam Quran kan ada kata dahaha ya. Jadi di, Allah itu uh, apa kayak merentangkan uh, bumi ini ya, datar gitu seperti karpet. Uh, tadi Mr. Kalau dia tanya apakah benar ini uh, seperti yang diklaim orang-orang Islam ya, bumi bentuknya seperti telur katanya ya, seperti an egg gitu. Datar of course mengatakan oh tidak, bukan. Ya. Yeah. Dahaha means to spread. Dahaha means to spread. It's just like a carpet. Yeah, to, yeah, to spread out, like to make it flat so you can walk on it. Hmm, jadi taha artinya itu uh, pembuatnya menjadi datar ya, sehingga kamu bisa berjalan di atasnya. So, uh, is it true that in Islam uh, uh, you have uh, the flat earth? Yes. 
Okay. <laughs> Um, wow. Yes, um, flat Earth and the sky is like a, a, cur- a curtain that comes on the flat. Um, but you know, at, at night, the night comes as a curtain. So if you imagine flat Earth, the sun above, and then you have a curtain of darkness, which is also flat, coming mm-hmm. under the sun to cover the Earth. That's how mm-hmm. um, the Quran says. Mm-hmm. Jadi di dalam uh, Quran bumi, bumi itu datar dan langit itu seperti um, tirai yang tirai yang direntangkan kalau malam hari datang gitu ya awan yang gelap itu seperti curtain seperti uh, korden ya seperti korden atau tirai yang direntangkan untuk menutupi bumi ini. Uh, and I think it's an Isaiah, it's an Isaiah where God says the earth is like a sphere, yeah, or, the, or like a ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, ya, saya rasa di uh, kitab Yesaya bumi itu uh, bulatan ya, bulatan bumi. Yeah, the sh- and the sh- uh, it says the the sorry the sh- the circle of the earth. So to me, that's a lot more. That's an Isaiah forty. Yeah, Isaiah um, empat puluh, yeah. So um, to me, that's much more close to the truth than what the Quran. Well, what you find in the Quran, sister, is that um, there's nothing too detailed. There's nothing clear enough for you to make anything out. So yes. you can you can argue this or that, but the Quran is not clear, which goes against what it says that it's a clear, well explained book. Ya, jadi di, masalahnya adalah di dalam Quran itu tidak ada sesuatu yang jelas, yang detail, gitu ya. Uh, sehingga uh, ini bertentangan sekali dengan klaim Quran bahwa Quran itu adalah uh, apa uh, bacaan yang jelas, yang uh, gampang dimengerti. Ini sangat bertentangan sekali, ya. Kalau kita membaca di dalam Quran, nggak ada sesuatu pun yang yang detail, yang jelas. Itu sehingga kita tuh jadi bisa berdebat gitu tentang ayat-ayat di dalam Quran. And okay. actually, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sister, go on. Uh, and actually, if you read the had um, the hadiths and if you read um, the tafsirs, they say the earth is actually like um, it's on top of a whale. You know, a whale like a big fish. Yes, I know. Yes. So yeah, jadi di dalam hadis is. atau tafsir dikatakan bumi itu uh, berada di atas ikan paus yang besar. So, uh, also Islam believe in seven earths? Yes, and seven heavens. Okay, jadi Islam juga percaya ada tujuh bumi dan uh, tujuh langit ya. It's a very strange idea for today's modern you have lots science. Of, you have lots of strange ideas, sister. You have the the baby that is made from the ribs and the and the backbone. Yeah, but they, they denied it, sister. They denied that uh, that uh, women have sperm also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and it comes from the ribs, which is, you know, ribs have yeah. nothing to do with babies. Yeah, come from the ribs of the woman. And yeah, maybe yeah. you can explain some of, uh, since you are a native Arabic speaker, maybe uh, you can uh, explain to us some verses in the Quran. What does that mean? I heard that... Uh, 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 The, uh, the word in the Quran, the Arab uh, Arabic word in the Quran is very different uh, from everyday Arabic language. Uh, is that true? So uh, they claim that some even Arab uh, Muslims who speaks Arab as native language, they hardly understand the Quran because uh, the word is so different. What um, do you say about There's something in Arabic called Fusha. Fusha is uh, like the official Arab Arabic language. People in uh, Arab countries, they have dialects. But if you're well educated, you learn the classical Arabic, you can understand the words. Um, I understood the words of the Quran as an Arab. Um, but the problem with the Quran is it's not clear. It doesn't explain anything. So the Quran itself is hard to understand, not because of the words. But because there's no context and there's no um, real explanation and detail like you find in the Bible. Okay, ya. Yeah. Jadi uh, sebagai orang Arab, Daughter of Christ ini berbahasa Arab ya. Jadi dia uh, bahasa ibunya, bahasa lidahnya adalah bahasa Arab. Uh, sebenarnya nggak ada kesulitan buat dia ya memahami uh, bahasa Arab klasik ya di dalam uh, Quran. Dia bisa mengerti sebenarnya apa maksudnya. Tetapi uh, yang tidak jelas di dalam Quran itu bukan karena bahasanya atau kata-katanya, tetapi karena tidak ada konteks di dalam Quran dan ayat-ayatnya tuh uh, terputus-putus ya tidak 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 runtut. Nah itu yang membuat kita sangat sulit untuk memahami uh, Quran. 
Yes, but I think yeah. they hide they hide behind the Arabic and it's something I've seen. Um, it's easy to say, oh, we, we don't know what it means rather than face what it actually means, which is ridiculous. Ya, dan kadang-kadang mereka bersembunyi mengatakan oh, kita tuh nggak tahu loh arti yang sebenarnya ya bersembunyi di, dengan bahasa Arab itu. Padahal sebenarnya mereka ngerti sih apa artinya itu. And if you think about it, the Allah, well, according to Muslims, the miracle of Islam is the Quran. So if the miracle is something that can't be understood, not even in its native language, then Allah has failed. Ya, karena orang muslim selalu berkata bahwa mujizat terbesar itu adalah Quran ya. Tapi kalau mujizat terbesarnya sendiri aja susah untuk dipahami, untuk dimengerti ya. Berarti Allah ini gagal gitu. Oke. Okay. Mr. Polandia, do you have anything to say? Uh, no more thanks. No more thanks? You want to uh, ask where does the author's idea come from or not? Uh, it's okay. Okay. She makes it if she wants. Okay. No problem. Okay. Sorry, what's the question? Okay. Uh, he said like, why why Muslim claim that the earth was like an ostrich egg? Egg, and where where did the idea come from? Um, I'm not sure. Um, there is a verse that. Uh, let me just find the verse. Uh. Yeah. Do you have something you want to share with us on share screen? You can share your screen. Uh, okay, I'll just get the verse for you. Surah 13, verse 41. All right, you can share screen, sister. Okay. Because I heard this um, thing about the egg. I'll show you what I mean. Uh, share screen. Okay. You see my screen? Yeah, okay. We see that. I, I'm thinking that's where they're coming. Do you not see how we deal with the earth diminishing it at its edges? So I think that's where they get it from. Um, now this, if you just read it, it doesn't. you don't understand anything. What do you mean you diminish the earth at its edges? Um. Now, the way they can explain this is like, it, it, for some reason, it has to be around. And if, if you keep cutting it at the edge, it will make it round. But that's not true. <laughs> you can have something flat. Also, you cut it at the edges. So that's what I was told from Muslims, that well, that's where they get this idea from about the roundness. But as you can see, if you actually look at the verse, there's nothing to, to talking about roundness at all. Ya, jadi tadi Mr. Polandia tanya, jadi dari mana ya Muslim bisa mendapatkan ide kalau bumi itu bentuknya seperti uh, telur uh, apa namanya burung uh, apa tuh ostrich ya? Ostrich apa ya teman-teman ya? Lupa saya nih. The word ostrich. Ostrich. Burung unta. Burung unta. Burung unta. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot ostrich in Indonesian. There's a big, uh, big bird. This, a bird. Yeah, ostrich. There's no such thing as ostrich in the Quran. There's, there's the word doesn't exist. Ya, jadi uh, idenya mungkin kata uh, daughter of Christ itu berasal dari surah 13 ayat 41 ya di mana dikatakan uh, bumi mempunyai tepi ya kami kurangi daerah-daerah itu tepi, ada tepi-tepinya gitu. Nah, tetapi kalau kita lihat ayat ini sendiri itu enggak enggak mengatakan bumi itu bulat ya atau seperti uh, bentuknya seperti seekor telur uh, so ekor, bentuknya seperti sebuah telur gitu ya karena tidak 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 mengatakan apa-apa ini cuman ada tepi-tepinya saja gitu. Jadi Ya, tapi itulah yang Muslim katakan sebagai alasannya kenapa mereka mengatakan eh, kalau ada tepinya begini berarti ini bentuknya bulat nih bumi kayak gitu. Uh, and there's no word for egg either in the whole Quran. There's no word for egg, you know, egg. Okay. Okay, okay. Jadi so. tidak ada kata-kata uh, telur di dalam Quran sama sekali ya. Oke, okay, uh, next question uh, Pak Ferry silakan. Oke, okay, thank you. Check check. Can you hear it? I can hear you, brother. Okay. Uh, nice to see you, sister, daughter Thank of you. Christ. I do. Okay. Uh, just first, uh, I want to let you know I, I translate two of your videos to my channel. First, in, uh, uh, from Sira International about Quran and plagiarism. Uh, and thank you. And the last one about the double act of Allah and the Messenger. Oh, okay. What's your channel, brother? <laughs> Uh, Lake Low Apologetics. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Thanks. I want to ask. Uh, I assume, or I believe you, you talk to many women uh, yeah. in your ministry. So I want to ask, what do they uh, think or feel about uh, their faith in in Jana? Because as I understand, they they won't get, they will get nothing in Jana uh, except uh, witnessing their men doing that filthy things. <laughs> so. Yes. What what do they feel or what do they think about their faith? Thank you. Um, well, you have to understand, brother. Islam, uh, in, in women in Islam are in a very powerless position. So the Muslim women that I talk to, they're fighting really hard to believe that Islam is true, because if they leave the uh, is Islam, it's very dangerous for them. They know this deep down. Um, Islam sets you up where, as a Muslim woman. You're in the house of your father or you're in the house of your husband and you're under complete control. So you try to live with it. You try to be happy with it. And um, if you rebel, if you leave, if you leave the Islam, then you put yourself in danger and your life can be destroyed. So they don't want that. They don't want that to happen to them. Or if they have children, they can lose their children. A lot of them are married to Muslim men. Uh, so they try so hard to want to believe that Islam is true. And that maybe they get to Jannah. Jannah for a Muslim woman, it's not about what she'll get. It's more about that she escaped hell. To escape hell for a Muslim woman is a big thing because Muhammad said most women will, um, hell is filled with mostly with women. So it's not that it, women don't think about the reward. They just think about getting away from hell. So even if she uh, sees her husband doing all these things, at least she's not in hell. So they say, okay, this is the best situation out of the worst situation, bad situation. But I can tell you, as a previously as a Muslim woman, I was never happy in Islam, never, because I knew that I was less, less than the man always. And even in marriage, all their life is to um, to serve the man, to make him happy. And if she doesn't make him happy, Allah will be angry with her. So I try to speak to them from like a human level. Uh, as a fellow woman to say really this life is really not good sorry sister it was a long one for you yeah jadi Joseph of Christ tadi menjelaskan bagaimana mengenai perempuan ya bagaimana mereka bisa pergi ke jannah atau ke surga itu Joseph of Christ menjelaskan tadi posisi wanita di dalam Islam itu sangat lemah ya mereka tidak punya um, apa ya, hak yang sama dengan laki-laki ya jadi dokter Ofros mengatakan pada waktu saya menjadi masih menjadi muslim saya tidak pernah bahagia gitu jadi uh, wanita wanita muslim tuh takut untuk keluar dari dari Islam karena pertama mereka berada di rumah uh, ayahnya ya mereka masih di bawah otoritas ayahnya atau di bawah otoritas suaminya sehingga nggak mungkin mereka keluar dari Islam jadi mereka hanya mencoba uh, percaya bahwa Islam ini adalah yang paling benar karena mereka takut untuk keluar dari dari Islam ya Ke, kemudian uh, Tadi dikatakan uh, bahwa posisi wanita di dalam Islam itu bu, kalau mereka pengen kejana itu bukan uh, mendapatkan sesuatu ya, tapi lebih kepada hanya untuk kesenangan laki-laki saja gitu. So if I understand that it's dangerous for them, but if any of them are listening to me now, you can leave the evil in your heart. You can come to God, to Jesus Christ in your heart. And if you have to keep it secret, then I understand. Just You have you can be free first in your heart, and then God will make a way for you. Ya, jadi Daughter of Christ berkata bahwa saya bisa mengerti ya wanita-wanita Muslim ini mungkin uh, takut ya untuk keluar dari Islam, tetapi Daughter of Christ berkata kamu nggak perlu uh, cerita atau kamu kamu bisa berdoa di dalam hatimu secara diam-diam gitu ya kepada Tuhan Yesus untuk uh, membebaskan kamu dulu. Yang penting kamu bebas dulu, kamu nggak perlu uh, cerita karena uh, saya tahu kata Daughter of Christ kamu pasti berada dalam bahaya. Ya, jadi kalau kamu keluar dari Islam pasti kamu berada di dalam bahaya besar. Tetapi yang terpenting sekarang adalah pribadi kamu sendiri aja. Kamu bisa berdoa diam-diam kepada Yesus seperti itu. And I also say to them that Islam has even if Islam destroys this life now that you're living, don't let it destroy your life after death. Yes. So uh, yes. Ya, jadi saya mengatakan kepada wanita-wanita Muslim sekalipun. Ya, Islam akan menghancurkan uh, atau membunuh kamu di kehidupan sekarang ini ya, menghancurkan kehidupan kamu di kehidupan dunia ini. Tetapi jangan sampai Islam membuat kamu uh, menghancurkan kehidupan kamu di kehidupan yang uh, akan datang, yang yang kekal nanti selanjutnya. 
and your value with God is a lot more than what Islam told you about your value. Like he came to die for you. So that means you have importance in the eyes of God. So you have to find out what the truth is and you have to uh, open your heart to God, even if it's in secret. Ya, jadi uh, bahwa nilai kamu wanita-wanita di mata Tuhan itu sangat berharga, lebih berharga ya daripada nilai kamu uh, sekarang ini ya yang ada di dunia ini. Sebab Tuhan itu datang untuk mati buat ke kamu, jadi pastilah uh, kita ini di mata Tuhan sangatlah uh, mulia ya, sangatlah berharga sampai dia mau datang dan mati bagi kita. Jadi uh, uh, yang terpenting sekarang adalah uh, kehidupan kamu yang kekal nanti. Sekalipun kamu nggak usah keluar-keluar kemana-mana kalau keluar dari Islam, kamu bisa dengan diam-diam uh, apa minta kepada Tuhan uh, Yesus berdoa kepada Tuhan Yesus secara uh, diam-diam atau secara pribadi. Thank you, sis. Okay. Yes. Uh, next question. Thank you, sister. I hope uh, many Indonesian Muslim women will hear about this from you. God bless yes. you and your ministry you. and your family, sister. Thank you. Please pray for us. Thank you. Oke, okay, ya saya saya berharap bahwa banyak wanita oh, wanita Muslim Indonesia yang mendengarkan kata Dr. Christ jadi tidak takut. Any questions or is it not? Oke, okay. ya. Yeah. Duran, silakan. Iya, yeah, uh, kalau Duran. saya mau nanya, iya yeah, kedengeran nggak Bu Sophie? Suaranya. Oke. Okay. You need me to translate for you? Halo. Oke. Okay. Ya, yeah, kamu kamu perlu aku aku terjemahkan. Eh, uh, iya. Yeah. Uh, saya mau nanya tentang Iya, yeah, iya. Yeah. Uh, Oke. Okay. Saya mau nanya tentang surah 23 ayat 6 dan 7. Oke, okay. uh, the of Christ, uh, he wanted to ask you about surah Di situ kan tentang 23 Verse uh, six and seven. Yeah. Maybe you can share yeah. screen. Six, mm-hmm. seven. Uh, surah twenty three, surah dua tiga ya. Yeah? Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Verse six and yeah. uh, seven. Yes, except the, the safeguard their chastity, except from the spouses, their dependence. Yeah, it's talking about. Um, I'm sorry for the language. Um, uh, about Actually, I mean. men. men. Yeah. Talking about men and they ought to. This is a deceptive yeah, translation. Tentang. Go on, brother. Hmm. Nah, di situ kan, ya, di situ kan ada kalimat hamba sahaya yang mereka miliki. Ya, yeah, memelakat aiman. Coba translate dulu deh, Bu Sopi. Ya. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nah, apakah to... hamba sahaya ini? harus dinikahi atau tidak? Oke, okay. jadi uh, saya kira tanya tentang uh, al mukminun ya uh, ayat 6 sampai tujuh. This is, uh, it has it says about uh, the slaves, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes yeah, it is. Slaves. So uh, is it uh, to be married or no. just no? Okay. No, it's not marriage. The verse 5 says those who guard their private parts except for their wives as or those whose right hand whose right hands possess those whose right hand possess is a word that means sex slaves that they get from war oke okay. jadi uh, kata uh, malikul yamin di sini itu adalah budak-budak Uh, artinya budak-budak seks ya yang mereka uh, dapatkan dari peperangan jadi mereka mendapatkan tawanan-tawanan uh, dari peperangan dan itu tidak dinikahi ya it's the same word that's in surah 424 which I'll find for you um, right here sama dengan, uh, sama dengan Anissa surah 4 ayat uh, 24, 24. 24. ayat You can see it's the same thing. Malikat aymanukum. See here now they've translated it correctly. Right hand possessed. Oke, okay, di sini mereka baru menerjemahkan dengan benar ya. Uh, apa yang dimiliki tangan kanan mereka. Jadi uh, yang mereka miliki di, di tangan kanan mereka atau budak-budak uh, seks tadi. So here it's saying that you can't. Jadi, uh, yeah, sorry, bro. Ya. Yeah. Yeah, Jadi bisa apa? melakukan 
Ya, jadi bisa melakukan persetubuhan tanpa dinikahi. Itu aja sih garis besarnya. So, uh, so you can have a, a sex with your slaves without marriage? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is it uh, uh, is it practicing right now? Um, I don't know. Is the answer? I've, we've heard. I've heard that people in Saudi, Saudi Arabia, you know, p- people go and work as maids in the houses. Yeah. Um, jadi saya tanya apakah masih dilakukan prakteknya sampai sekarang? Dr. of Christ berkata ya di Saudi Arabia kalau orang kerja sebagai pembantu. And they use them in that way. Abuse them, I should say. Oke, okay, jadi mereka memperlakukan uh, pembantu-pembantu seperti itu ya. Ya, yeah, because there are so many Indonesian um, yeah. Be careful. In Be careful. I'm not going there. <laughs> no one. <laughs> got um, but actually, uh, it should be only by war, only if Muslims go into battle. And okay. let's say, and say that they win, they overpower them, then they can take all the women, even if they're married, Yeah, according to verse 24, even the married one, except those who... So Allah here is saying, don't have sex with married men, women, except that if you got them by, possess them by um, that way. So even okay. married women are not safe. Okay, jadi... Uh, sampai, uh, sampai sekarang masih dilakukan ya oleh uh, orang-orang di Saudi Arabia terhadap pembantu mereka. Tetapi di sini Allah berkata ya surat uh, 4 ayat 24, Ya, jadi uh, jangan uh, berhubungan seks dengan wanita yang sudah menikah kecuali ya, kecuali yang didapatkan uh, tawanan-tawanan perempuan. Ya, seharusnya ini sih uh, hanya ketika terjadi peperangan ya, ketika perang kemudian ada tawanan-tawanan perempuan itu mereka boleh berhubungan seks kata Allah di sini. So obviously we know okay. this is adul- uh, adultery, you know. Yeah, of ini course. juga merupakan satu persinahan tentu saja ya. But uh, I also read uh, some of the tafsir Uh, some of the thoughts here that says that it is uh, it is a haram for you to marry uh, the slaves, but it is halal to have sex with the slaves. So, yeah, uh, there's no need to marry the slaves. Um, you know, yeah. marriage is it's not marriage. They're not there for that. It's a different thing. Slaves okay. are just slaves. They don't have the rights of a wife. Yeah, um, yeah. mm-hmm. Yes. So you have to free them first. Iya, yeah, oke. Okay. Jadi eh yeah. uh, enggak perlu dinikahi ya kalau budak itu enggak enggak perlu dikawinin gitu ya. Jadi ya yeah, uh, karena mereka enggak punya hak seperti istri ya karena mereka hanya budak saja dan bisa uh, boleh dilakukan hubungan seks dengan uh, budak-budak itu. Oke, okay. ada okay. Uh, okay. any any question Duran? Oke, okay, see brother Jay. Ya. Can see brother Jay in the chat. Yeah. It says Pak. as Go on. Mm-hmm. Ya Duran silakan. Ya saya mau nanya tentang itu dong surah 18 ayat 86 Bu Sophie. Hmm. You wanted to ask you about Karena terjemahan uh, di 18? Indonesia. Uh, surah 18. Mm-hmm. Verse uh, ayat berapa Duran? 86. 86. Oh yes. <laughs> surah 18. 86. about the sun. Um, okay. Yes. Ya, karena terjemahan di Indonesia itu mempergunakan ka, uh, kata laut. Apakah benar digunakan kata laut atau kata yang lain seharusnya? Oke, okay. in the Indonesian translation they use the word ocean. No. Is that true? Is it an ocean or um, is it another words? No, it's not the ocean. The Arabic word is here. I'm circling it. Ain and Hamia. That means um, murky spring, you know, like a little uh, lake, like a very small, um, very small body of water, like you know, like a puddle. Um, murky me uh, hamia means muddy. Comes from the word hamia, which means mud, which Allah uses in another word, to, uh, way, another verse to say what He created man from, mud. So it's a muddy spring. Ya, jadi uh, ya surah 18 ayat 86 ini kan terjemahan bahasa Indonesia yang lautan ya. Apakah benar nih laut? Kata uh, tanya Sefek Duran. Uh, Dr. of Christ mengatakan oh, enggak, enggak itu bukan laut, tetapi seperti uh, air hamiah. Jadi kayak mata air kecil gitu, uh, mata air hangat. 
gitu ya mata air seperti danau danau kecil gitu ya yang hangat jadi seperti lumpur Marcus Spring jadi seperti lumpur yang uh, yang lumpur yang hitam ya tapi kecil gitu jadi seperti mata air kecil mata air kolam lumpur hangat lah gitu tepatnya sebenarnya terjemahannya bukan bukan uh, lautan berarti kata lautan sendiri itu terjemahan yang salah sama sekali ya So the translation, if they translate it as oceans, that is a that is deceived. That's translate. wrong. The word yeah. for ocean is al muhit, and the word for sea is bahr. Uh, and also, um, there is um, a confirmation for this by Muhammad himself in Sahih Hadith. I'm gonna share my screen again. Um, okay, jadi terjemahnya salah. Bukan Sahih. Sahih. Kita lihat ya bukti-buktinya. Narrated uh, Abu Dhar. I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah who was riding a donkey while the sun was setting. He asked, do you know where this sets? Uh, I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He says, it sets in a spring of warm water. Jadi kata lautan itu bukan, bukan air ya. Tapi bah di dalam uh, bahasa Arabnya ya. Nah ini buktinya nih uh, hadis yang sahih ya Sunan Abi Dawud ya 4002 diceritakan diriwayatkan oleh Abu Dar ya dia uh, duduk di belakang utusan Allah yang sedang menaiki keledainya pada waktu matahari itu terbenam ya. Kemudian Abu Dar uh, eh sorry uh, Muhammad bertanya nih kamu tahu nggak di mana matahari ter itu terbenam? Uh, Abu Dar menjawab uh, Allah dan utusannya tahu yang terbaik. Kemudian Muhammad berkata, matahari terbenam di kolam lumpur hangat, ya, a spring of warm water atau hamia. Yeah. There's no doubt. There's no, there's no doubt. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought I saw um, Brother Jay in the chat. He asked okay. a question. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Brother Jay, said, mm -hmm. can you ask if Jesus yeah, does things only bilang, can? Bilang terima kasih ya. Okay, yeah, terima okay kasih. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he says if uh, Jesus does things only Allah in the Quran can do. Yes, uh, Jesus Christ, he creates. Jesus Christ creates in the Quran. Um, and obviously Allah is known as the creator, Al-Khaliq. It's one of his attributes. So he shares that with Jesus. Um, yeah, jadi Brother Jay yeah. bertanya, apakah Yesus di dalam Quran melakukan hal-hal yang hanya bisa dilakukan oleh Allah itu sendiri? Dr. Alfres menjawab, iya, Yesus di dalam Quran adalah seorang pencipta, ya, dan uh, sepertinya Allah mengklaim dia adalah pencipta, ya, Al-Khalaq, gitu ya, jadi Allah adalah pencipta, dan Yesus juga bisa mencipta di dalam Quran. He also knows um, the unseen, uh, because he knows what people have put in their houses, that's in another surah, also, uh, only Allah knows the unseen. Ya, Yesus juga mengetahui hal, hal yang tersembunyi karena dikatakan di dalam Quran Yesus tahu apa yang disembunyikan orang-orang di dalam rumah mereka tetapi di dalam Quran juga dikatakan hanya Allah yang mengetahui hal-hal yang tidak terlihat itu. Uh, yeah, this is in surah 3 verse 49. Surah 3 uh, ayat 49. Uh, both things that Jesus does. Hmm. And he uh, raises the dead. Yesus. Okay. Raises the dead. Yesus. Ya, Jesus juga membangkitkan orang mati di dalam Quran. Jesus raises the dead, uh, which is another thing that Allah is only meant to do. Uh, one of his attributes is al-ba'ith. Al-ba'ith means the resurrector from the dead. Ya, jadi Yesus membangkitkan orang mati di dalam uh, Quran, yang mana itu hanya bisa dilakukan oleh Allah itu sendiri, karena salah satu dari nama Allah adalah al-ba'ith. Al-ba'ith itu artinya uh, kebangkitan, ya, dia yang membangkitkan. Uh, so uh, actually uh, God does, doesn't leave himself without witness even in the Quran and I came because of the verse that says uh, Jesus is the word of Allah as well so that was a, a, a clue clues in the Quran to the actual truth ya jadi rupanya Allah juga tidak meninggalkan saksi-saksinya ya bahkan di dalam Quran itu sendiri dan saya uh, datang uh, bisa percaya kepada Tuhan Yesus karena salah satu ayat di dalam Quran yang menyatakan bahwa Yesus adalah firman Allah itu sendiri Okay, so uh, in, in the Quran, there is uh, no verse that said that Jesus was created uh, by the word of God because all Muslims uh, 
claims that Jesus was created as the same, same way as Adam was created, right? Uh, that's not true. Uh, Jesus was not created as Adam was created. Adam was created, according to Islam, from the dust of the earth. Allah made him, shaped him, and then breathed into him. Jesus Christ was given um, his word and his spirit uh, thrown to Mary. Ya, jadi tidak benar ya kalau pencip, uh, Yesus dikatakan Yesus itu diciptakan sama seperti Adam ya Yesus itu hanya ciptaan. Dr. Overus mengatakan tidak benar ya jadi Adam itu diciptakan dari uh, tanah ya kemudian Allah mengembuskan roh di dalamnya. Kalau Yesus itu adalah firman dan roh yang diberikan Allah ditaruh di dalam rahim Maria. Yeah, so okay, uh, yeah. Okay, so one of the Jesus title also Kalamullah and Rahullah, right? Yeah, um, that's in Surah um, 4 verse 17, Surah 4 verse 171. Uh, yeah. He is the spirit of Allah and the word of Allah. So just that means that he's divine, really. Yeah, jadi salah satu gelar Yesus itu adalah uh, roh Allah atau firman Allah dan uh, uh, salah, salah satu gelar Yesus adalah Firman Allah dan Roh Allah itu sendiri itu ada di Surah Anisa 171 ya Surah 4 ayat 171 bahwa Dia adalah Firman yang daripada Allah dan Roh Allah itu sendiri dan itu menyatakan bahwa Yesus adalah Ilahi. Uh, ah, yeah. oke, okay. ya yeah, Pak bagus silakan. Oke, okay. uh, uh, Sister Doctor Doctor of Christ, uh, mm -hmm. I want to ask you. Uh, uh, yeah. You can speak Indonesian, Pak Bagus. Ya. Uh, bicara Indonesia aja, Bu Sofi oh, nanti ya. translate, Pak Bagus. In Quran, surah number 5, mm -hmm. uh, verse 101 and 100, 102. Yeah. Uh, according, uh, according Sahih Bukhari, volume 2, number 55. Uh, why Allah hate someone who asks question? Yes, that's another good question, brother. Um, we're not. Uh, the verse says, "Do not ask questions. Um, do not ask about things that would be trouble for you if you knew about them." It's very, very vague, very mysterious. Um, as to why why that is, I'm just going to share my screen with you. Um, I think the re the reason is, as you said, the brother about the hadith is that Muhammad had um, people ask him questions about certain rulings, and they got the ruling that they didn't like. So here yeah, it says, "Do not ask about things that would trouble you. That would trouble you if would disclose to you. That means don't ask about things that when if they became clear to you, it will trouble you." The question is, how do I know <laughs> if the, the, which things that will be trouble if I find out about them and which things are not trouble? Do you see? That's why I'm asking. So that's a bit stupid logic. And um, why why would they be trouble? That's the, another question. Tasukum here actually means to shame you. Things will shame you if you find out the answer. Why would they shame me? Is that truth? Is the truth shameful? Why can't I ask a question? Um, it says here, if you ask, if you are asked of them while the Quran is being revealed, they will become obvious to you. So that it, Muhammad, he had his revelations come. As people ask questions, the revelations would come. Or if he had a, a problem, then the revelation would come and give him the solution. That means that the revelation was affected by what, what, by what people would ask and what they wouldn't ask. And he had, he'll have rulings depending on what people ask or if they didn't ask. So the, Muhammad said in the hadith, because you asked, the ruling will be even harsher. So don't ask me again. But if he had revelations from Allah, the ruling should be the same. Allah's revelations shouldn't change by people asking questions. So actually, this whole thing can destroy Islam as well. For all these reasons. Okay. Oh, Sorry, sister. <laughs> <laughs> Pak Bagus, I can repeat if you like. 
Uh, yeah. I just get to the point in Indonesian. Uh, tadi Pak Bagus menanyakan surat Al-Ma'idah ayat 101-102 ya. Kenapa di dalam Islam itu kita nggak boleh bertanya gitu ya. Sebab kalau bertanya katanya nanti uh, membuat orang jadi tidak beriman ya atau ragu-ragu gitu. Uh, tadi Dr. Ofkers mengatakan uh, kata-kata aslinya itu sebenarnya adalah kalau kamu tanya dan itu uh, di, diperintahkan kepadamu gitu ya. Uh, maksudnya kalau kamu tanya kemudian dijawab oleh Allah kamu akan menjadi malu. gitu ya kamu akan menjadi malu di situ tetapi terjemahannya itu uh, tidak tidak seperti bahasa Arab aslinya ya di dalam terjemahannya jadi uh, mungkin ayat ini diturunkan karena uh, banyak orang itu bertanya kepada Muhammad kemudian tiba-tiba turun ayat gitu jadi uh, Muhammad itu banyak ditanya kemudian ketika ditanya ayatnya turun nanti ditanya lagi yang lain ayatnya turun nah akhirnya berubah-ubah gitu ya berubah-ubah tapi kalau uh, memang itu berasal daripada uh, Tuhan yang sejati tentu saja setiap kali ditanya tentang sesuatu pasti tidak akan berubah gitu ya kan perintahnya juga pasti firmannya tidak akan berubah gitu ya nah jadi hmm. apakah firman Allah ini diturunkan hanya ketika ditanya gitu jadi uh, kalau ada pertanyaan dari umatnya misalnya umatnya tanya ini terus turun ayat nanti besoknya tanya lagi Ayat yang lain turun gitu. Apakah firman uh, Tuhan ini diturunkan karena pertanyaan-pertanyaan uh, umatnya ini, gitu kan? Nah, seharusnya tidak seperti itu ya. Kalau itu benar-benar wahyu dari uh, dari Allah seperti itu. Does that make sense? Oke, okay. Bu Suki. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Uh, ada lagi pertanyaan gini. Apakah naik haji itu wajibkah untuk dilaksanakan atau hanya jadi sarana pengampunan dosa. Ah, oke. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bagus wants to ask you is uh, going to Hajj is uh, one of the pillar of Islam, right? So it is a uh, yes. um is a must thing to do. Yes. That you must go to the Hajj or mm-hmm. it's just uh, the um, The way option. that you can, yes, yeah, that option or uh, just one way for you to to be forgiven of your sins. Yes, it's um, not option. You must do Hajj at least once in a life. Um, okay, jadi ini bukan suatu pilihan ya, tapi uh, memang diharuskan ya pergi uh, satu kali seumur hidupmu untuk pergi Haji. So according to Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, you come back without sins, so you have all sins forgiven. Jadi menurut Sahih Al Bukhari dan Muslim, uh, ketika kamu pulang pergi haji, kamu dosamu diampuni ya, seperti bayi tadi. But when you come back, even though you're clean, um, the sins start building up again. They start going up and up again. So that's why Muslims go back to Saudi to keep going back to have the have it cleaned up again. Mm-hmm. Jadi sekalipun sudah pulang dari haji ya sekalipun katanya dosa mereka sudah diampuni tapi akhirnya numpuk dosa lagi nih akhirnya jadi mereka harus berulang-ulang pergi ke Saudi Arabia untuk naik haji. So it's a lot of money for Saudi Arabia it's like a business for them. Hmm, jadi ini menghasilkan banyak uang untuk Saudi Arabia ya seperti bisnis bagi mereka. And uh, the Muslims also like to die there because if you die there you haven't had a chance for your sins to come back to to start again. That um, that's the reason ya. Yeah. Yeah, uh, jadi Muslim, oke. Okay. Jadi Muslim tuh suka sekali kalau pada waktu naik haji kemudian mereka mati ya sebab kalau pas naik haji mereka mati artinya mereka nggak ada kesempatan lagi untuk berbuat dosa gitu. Nanti kalau balik lagi mereka dosa lagi balik lagi Muslim naik ke Saudi Arabia. Tapi kalau mereka mati pada waktu naik haji ya artinya mereka mati dalam kondisi masih baik gitu ya masih uh, belum ada dosanya. Kira-kira seperti itu teman-teman. Oke, okay. yes. Pak Bagus. Uh, oke. Okay. Yeah, pertanyaan, pertanyaan ya, yeah. oke. Okay. Pertanyaan ketiga, okay, uh, ketika, ketika, ya, ketika Doctor of Christ uh, apa, men, apa, menerima Yesus Kristus sebagai Tuhan Selamat, bagaimana kondisi keluarganya, apakah menerima atau bagaimana gitu, gitu bu? Oh, ya, yeah. when you were born, uh, when 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 you was born again and accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, what about your family? Is your family accepted you uh, becoming Christians or what happened to you? Uh, it was very bad, brother. Um, so I was secret for a few months because I was afraid. And then uh, I told my family because I didn't want them to go to hell. I want them to know the truth. And um, a lot of things happened. Um, because I live in the West, my life is safe. 
but um, they've stopped talking to me and um, I've they've stopped make um, I can't see them I can't see you know my nephew my the you know who I said I said I loved I can't see him until I come back to Islam uh, they will things will not be normal again so that's how it is now until now uh until now yes uh but by the lord's by a lot of prayer um uh, my mom just recently in the past month or so she texted me again she wants to know if i'm okay because of the corona um they wanted to check if i was still alive i guess <laughs> okay. and uh the lord used that to uh very slowly now there is communication but i my father still wouldn't uh, see me he wouldn't speak to me and um i'm not allowed into any of my brothers and sisters homes so I, i've i've never i haven't felt sad because the lord has given me so much and i am sure that he he's working in my family i i think he will save them too that's the hope i have okay jadi kadangnya pada waktu itu enggak begitu bagus ya dia harus bersembunyi menyembunyikan Uh, bahwa dia sudah menjadi orang Kristen ya selama beberapa bulan tetapi akhirnya nggak kuat juga ya akhirnya dia pengen keluarganya diselamatkan ya jadi dia katakan dia sudah masuk Kristen pada waktu itu dan akhirnya keluarganya memutuskan hubungan tetapi karena daughter of Christ itu tinggalnya di barat ya jadi nggak tinggal di, di dengan keluarganya ya jadi dia lebih aman begitu karena dia dia tinggalnya di di, di luar negeri gitu ya nah uh, tapi dia uh, keluarganya semua memutuskan hubungan ya selama beberapa tahun bahkan dia nggak pernah ketemu keponakannya laki-laki ini tadi yang sangat dicintainya ya nggak boleh ketemu nggak boleh ketemu uh, keluarganya kakaknya adiknya gitu ya, saudara-saudaranya dia nggak boleh ketemu tetapi baru beberapa bulan uh, lalu ibunya mulai uh, menghubungi dia gitu ya uh, teks mungkin mau lihat gimana nih situasi corona ini ada uh, terus mengatakan mungkin ibu saya ngecek apakah saya masih hidup atau enggak katanya gitu ya ya pelan-pelan lah uh, uh, terjalin lagi komunikasi tetapi ayahnya masih uh, belum mau uh, berbicara dengan uh, daughter of Christ gitu dan sampai sekarang ya masih terputus hubungannya dengan keluarganya yang lain uh, begitu Pak bagus yes but um, I want to tell uh, ex Muslims or people who come to Christ um, just practical advice um, make sure you have somewhere to live before you tell people <laughs> um, before you tell your family make sure you have somewhere to live because um, I couldn't live with my family and you okay. can end up homeless just be wise yes okay. so also when you came to Christ you already live in the west yeah um, my family had moved yeah that is how i learned english and um, yes so th- this was yeah. the lord's uh, uh, provision because if i was back home where i came from i would have probably been a lot more dangerous yeah okay Ya, jadi ini hanya 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 saran praktis aja ya dari Data of Christ bagi teman-teman yang mau keluar dari Islam ya. Pastikan Anda sudah mempunyai rumah ya, mempunyai tempat tinggal yang uh, siap menampung Anda ya. Jadi kalau Anda mau menyatakan iman Anda, pastikan Anda jangan sampai diusir dari rumah kemudian jadi gelandangan ya. Kemudian jadi uh, jadi pastikan Anda bijaksana juga ya. Uh, seperti yang dilakukan Dr. of Christ. Jadi Dr. of Christ mengatakan ya untung saya uh, tinggal di, di luar negeri gitu ya di barat ya tidak tinggal bersama dengan keluarga saya. Kalau saya ada di sana mungkin saya akan jauh lebih berbahaya kondisinya. Jadi ya Anda harus uh, uh, berhikmat lah ya kalau Anda mau menyatakan iman Kristen Anda juga harus uh, bijaksana gitu. Pastikan Anda udah punya apa ya istilahnya uh, jaga-jaga dulu nih kalau diusir sama keluarganya aku harus kemana gitu ya. Uh, Oke okay. Pak Bagus sudah Pak? Oke okay, oke okay, thank you. Oke okay, sebelum Pak Polandia, Pak Pavel 88 silakan. Oke okay, selamat malam terima kasih Dokter of Christ. Ada dua pertanyaan yang pertama uh, uh, sebenarnya dalam Islam itu siapa sih yang menyelamatkan atau bagaimana sih supaya kita selamat? Apakah dengan meyakini Muhammad Nabi bisa selamat? Atau dengan naik haji supaya selamat, atau dengan perbuatan supaya selamat. Ya, lalu apakah di Islam itu ada kepastian keselamatan begitu? Lalu yang kedua, uh, antara Al-Quran dan Hadis, sebenarnya yang yang kitab suci yang mana? Kalau mereka mengklaim bahwa kitab suci itu adalah Al-Quran, lalu Hadis itu apa? Apakah Al-Quran bisa berdiri tanpa Hadis? Demikian. Pak kepanjangan nih Pak. 
<laughs> yang pertama dulu Pak Pavel mungkin bisa bisa diulang Pak pertama pertama ah iya sebenarnya syarat untuk selamat untuk masuk surga di Islam itu apa sih gitu apakah cukup mempercayai Muhammad sebagai nabi atau harus ditambahkan dengan naik haji atau harus ditambahkan lagi dengan perbuatan baik jadi yang yang jelas dalam Islam itu supaya selamat itu bagaimana gitu oke okay, oke okay. stop ya Pak ya stop dulu ya uh, Mr. Pavel 88 uh, wants to ask you uh, what is the uh, terms and condition to get salvation in Islam is that like you have to go to Hajj is that enough when you go to Hajj then uh, you get salvation in Islam or uh, you have uh, to do a good deeds or what what is uh, the the terms and condition how to get salvation in Islam um, there's no such thing as salvation in Islam there's no guarantee tidak ada, tidak ada namanya keselamatan di dalam Islam tidak ada jaminan keselamatan di dalam Islam uh, there there are uh, things that you have to do the five pillars Jadi uh, ada yang yeah. uh, teman-teman Islam harus lakukan yaitu lima pilar Islam. So they are must you must do them. If you don't do them, then um, it's it's you probably got to you go to hell. Uh, so those five things are the shahada, uh, the salah, uh, the zakah, the hajj, and um, what was the, uh, one, two, three, four, fasting. Uh, Fasting, yeah. Did I say, did I say fasting? Sorry, yeah. No. Salah, Salam, Zakah, Hajj, and Shahid. Five things. Fasting also? Hajj? Yeah, so, so Shahada is the... Shahada, mm-hmm. yeah. Salah is prayer. Yeah. Um, and fasting the Salam. Um, mm-hmm. Zakat is the money you give. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's about 2% of your wealth. And the Hajj once in a life. So the Salah is five times a day. So they have to be on time every day. If you miss miss it, it's a sin, and um, it there's no guarantee if Allah accepts your prayer any of these things or not. He he says that he looks at your intention. So you have to make sure your intention is pure. You do the prayers on time every day. If you miss the prayer, um, the first thing that he looks at Allah looks at, at on day of judgment is the prayer. So he sees if you've missed any prayers. So if you imagine five prayers every day. You would miss one, so you're always not sure. Okay, jadi um, tidak ada tadi ya, tidak ada namanya keselamatan di dalam Islam. Ya, tidak ada jaminan keselamatan. Islam tidak mengenal yang namanya uh, keselamatan ya. Uh, memang ada lima pilar di dalam uh, Islam ya. Tadi antara lain adalah uh, mengucapkan syahadat, kemudian puasa, zakat, uh, uh, apa salat ya. Tadi uh, salat. Ya, kemudian naik mm-hmm. haji uh, sekali seumur hidup. Nah, salat pun itu harus uh, lima waktu dan nggak boleh telat, ya. Jadi kebayangkan kalau satu hari lima kali, kadang-kadang bisa kelewatan satu gitu atau nggak uh, kadang-kadang nggak genep lima. Padahal di hari kiamat nanti uh, Allah itu akan menghakimi menurut uh, doa atau salatnya gitu ya. Salatnya kalau ada sampai kelewatan satu, waduh neraka itu tempatnya. Gitu. So you have to You have to do good deeds. So on the judgment, there's a scale. On one side is good deeds. On one side is bad deeds. And your good deeds have to be more than your bad. Ya, jadi uh, nanti ada timbangannya ya. Perbuatan baikmu ditimbang, perbuatan jahatmu ditimbang. Jadi perbuatan baikmu nanti kalau ditimbang tuh harus lebih berat nih daripada perbuatan jahatmu nanti. Yes. Yeah, so uh, obviously no one knows um, because Allah doesn't give you a clue if he accepts good deeds or not. So you have to just keep trying, trying, trying. and hope that he accepts it and it's in your good deed balance. Ya, jadi sekalipun sudah melakukan semuanya itu tapi enggak ada kepastian, enggak tahu ya apakah Allah akan menerima perbuatan baik, uh, perbuatan baik. Jadi uh, harus dicoba, 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 dicoba terus gitu. Tapi tetap tidak ada kepastian apakah perbuatan baik kita bisa melebihi uh, dosa-dosa kita pada waktu nanti ditimbang. That's why Muslims try so hard and why they're afraid. to leave it because if they do big sin like doubt Islam or doubt Allah that's in like in their bad deeds. Mm-hmm. Jadi itulah sebabnya mengapa muslim takut meninggalkan Islam ya karena kalau mereka melakukan dosa besar gitu ya mereka melakukan suatu uh, perbuatan yang dosa yang sangat besar yang sangat berat ya sehingga itu nanti akan memberatkan mereka di hari kiamat. 
um, if there are any Muslims uh, watching, I want to tell you that Allah is not, Allah is, a, they make him look scary, but he's not scary. I rebelled against him in Mecca around the Kaaba and um, I'm okay. <laughs> he didn't destroy me. He didn't do anything to me. Allah is not real. <laughs> Ya, jadi bagi muslim yang mendengarkan saya, kata Daughter of Christ, ya, uh, Islam itu membuat uh, menggambarkan Allah itu dengan sangat mengerikan gitu, sehingga kita tuh ketakutan gitu ya. Tetapi sebenarnya tidak ya, Tuhan itu tidak tidak mengerikan seperti itu ya. Saya memberontak kepada Allah di Mekah gitu ya pada saat saya naik haji, tapi ya saya baik-baik saja sampai sekarang tidak ada yang terjadi dengan saya. Yes. Oke. Okay. Uh, second question, pertanyaan kedua, Pak. Ah. Bagaimana dengan jihad? Katanya kalau jihad itu langsung naik langsung ke surga karena disebut sebagai apa kematian apa itu mati sahid itu. Okay, what about the jihad? Because if you go to jihad, it means you are dying in shahid. Shahid, uh, shahid you, yeah, you yeah. Died as a martyr. Yes. And uh, you obviously go straight to jannah. Yes, yes, that's true. So there's a promise that if you uh, die in battle, a shaheed, with the first stroke of the sword, um, you go straight to Jannah. Um, mm. Obviously, there's no way to find out until you're on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm very, very sad for the people who, um, in this world, they do violence because that's their only way to get their guarantee in Islam. Um, because once they go to the other side, they'll find that it's hell. This, the promise is not real. But I saw from this life, because I chose Hajj to see, that the promise is not real. They didn't get sins forgiven in Hajj, and I didn't get happier in Hajj. So the other promise with the jihad is also fake. Ya, jadi ya itu benar ya itu ajaran dari dalam Islam ya kalau kamu mati jihad ya kamu dalam tebasan pertama gitu kamu terbunuh gitu ya di dalam jihad kamu akan langsung pergi ke jannah. Tapi ya tidak kita nggak akan tahu kebenarannya ya sampai sampai orang itu benar-benar uh, apa mati ya baru dia sampai di sana gitu ya di dunia orang mati baru ketahuan kalau itu semuanya sebenarnya bohong gitu ya nggak ada itu janji-janji mengenai uh, jannah itu. Uh, Dr. Ofros mengatakan saya pergi ke haji dan janji-janji itu nggak benar gitu ya Kalau saya pergi ke haji saya tidak mendapatkan kedamaian gitu ya Saya tetap menderita pada waktu saya uh, naik haji pada waktu itu Ya Pak Pavel silakan. Oke okay. uh, uh, Sebenarnya kitab suci dalam Islam itu Al-Quran atau hadis Jikalau memang katanya Al-Quran adalah kitab suci Dapatkah al Quran berdiri sendiri tanpa hadis karena selama ini apa yang kurang di Al-Quran selalu ditambahkan oleh hadis silakan Oke okay, so he asks you um, uh, which is the book uh, that Muslim have to uh, follow is it Quran or is it hadis or which uh, is, is the holy book that, uh, that Muslim have to follow the Quran or the hadis uh, if Quran is the holy book So can Quran stand alone without uh, the hadiths? Can you only follow the Quran without the hadiths? So because Muslim always claim that they have to uh, follow also the hadiths. So what do you think about Yes. It? Yes, the Quran is the holy book. The word of Allah is the Quran. Quran. Everything else is the word of um, human beings, including the hadith. But you can't have a, a Quran as a standalone book because there are things in the Quran that you can't do without the hadith. For example, Quran says pray. It doesn't say how to pray. You know all the movements. It doesn't say how many rakahs. It doesn't say how many times. It doesn't say um, uh, how to do it. So to get that information, you have to go to the hadith and the seerah and a lot of other um, places actually. But Quran says do hajj. It doesn't say how. It doesn't say go around the Kaaba seven times. All these extra detail you find in hadith. So you can't be a Muslim. You can't practice your religion only with the Quran because as we've said Quran doesn't have any data. Oke, okay, jadi sebenarnya ya memang kitab sucinya orang muslim itu adalah Quran ya. The, uh, Quran adalah menurut mereka klaim mereka adalah uh, perkataannya Allah langsung ya. Yang lain itu hadis adalah perkataan manusia. Tetapi kita tidak bisa uh, mempraktekkan Islam hanya dari Quran saja. Ya, uh, karena ada detail-detail di dalam Quran itu yang enggak ada gitu ya. Adanya di dalam hadis gitu ya. Jadi 
Contohnya saja uh, Quran mengatakan harus sholat, tapi nggak 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 dijelaskan bagaimana caranya sholat, berapa rakaat, bagaimana gerakannya pada waktu sholat, semua itu dijelaskan di dalam sirat uh, Nabi dan uh, di dalam hadis gitu ya. Contohnya uh, Quran mengatakan pergi haji, tapi nggak uh, tahu berapa kali keliling keliling Kaabahnya gitu ya, bagaimana caranya pergi haji dan sebagainya itu tidak dijelaskan di dalam Quran dan hanya dijelaskan di dalam hadis gitu. Jadi tidak bisa melakukan uh, itu tanpa hadis. And of course, um, the hadith is a big problem for Muslims because it was compiled more than 250 years later than Muhammad. And um, there's obviously the different grades because it's people telling each other in the chain. So you have the sahih, which is the most authentic, and then the different grades. So some Muslims, they don't like the hadith because it says some shameful things, but they can't reject it because if they reject the hadith, they reject their religion too. Oke, okay, jadi hadis ini juga merupakan masalah ya bagi orang muslim karena hadis ini ditulis kira-kira 250 tahun setelah Muhammad mati. Dan ini juga merupakan masalah karena ada grade-nya ya atau ada levelnya ya, ada yang sahih karena ini di, diriwayatkan uh, secara berantai ya, periwayatnya secara berantai dan kita nggak tahu nih mana yang sahih jadi ada grade-grade-nya seperti itu. Uh, tetapi muslim banyak sekali menolak hadis-hadis yang mereka anggap sangat memalukan gitu, tapi mereka juga tidak bisa menolak semua. Pokoknya, sebab kalau mereka menolak hadis-hadis ini, artinya mereka menolak agama mereka, karena mereka tidak bisa mempraktekkan agama mereka tanpa hadis. Ya, Pak Pavel. Oke, okay. berarti dapat uh, saya simpulkan bahwa Al-Quran itu dan diklaim sebagai kitab yang sempurna, tidak sempurna dong. Kita yang cacat, karena dia tidak bisa menjawab dirinya sendiri dan tidak bisa menjawab kebutuhan umat, karena semua kebutuhan umat yang tidak lengkap di Al-Quran, selalu dilengkapi dengan hadis. Oke, okay. uh, he said like, can I make a conclusion about uh, the Quran? So, Quran is not a perfect book, because Quran cannot stand alone without the hadith. So, uh, when Quran claim that it is uh, it, uh, it has a perfection in it, it's not true, because uh, uh, everything uh, that is not in the Quran, you can find it in the hadith. So, is that the conclusion? That is exactly right. Um, yeah. That is exactly Betul, right. And uh, yeah, Surah 16 verse 89, it says the Quran has details of every single thing. <laughs> yeah, katanya Surah uh, 16 ayat 86 mengatakan uh, Quran ini diturunkan dengan sangat jelas, ya, sangat detail. Ya, ternyata ini nggak benar, gitu, ya, karena kita banyak detail yang kita nggak tahu di dalam Quran ini dan harus lihatnya di hadits. So it's it doesn't it's not actually very hard to prove Islam wrong just with this A on its own. I'm just gonna share my screen with you. Um, Sebenarnya nggak nggak susah ya menunjukkan kalau Islam ini keliru ya. You see this Surah 16 verse 89. Okay, Surah 16 ayat 89. We have revealed to you the book as an explanation of all things. Kita sudah mewahyukan kitab ini sebagai penjelasan dari semuanya. Kulisaid. So, does the Quran tell you about electricity? Does it tell you about geography? Does it tell you about anything? <laughs> does it tell you even about its own self, its own rules? So, just this verse destroys the Islam. Jadi kalau Quran mengatakan ini adalah kitab yang memberi penjelasan mengenai segala hal, apakah Quran benar-benar memberitahu kita tentang segala hal, tentang listrik, tentang geografi? Ya bahkan Quran tidak memberikan penjelasan tentang dirinya sendiri gitu, nggak jelas gitu hal-hal ini di dalam Quran. Ya, yeah, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, bro. thank you, brother, for that. That's a good point. Oke, okay, terima kasih, Pak Pavel. Thank you. Jadi kesimpulannya okay. mikir dan salam waras. <laughs> Yeah. What's he saying? It's saying like uh, you have, uh, you know, yeah, don't go crazy. You know, you you have to think about uh, Islam. You have to rethink about your religion. Yes, it's um, it's actually not that hard if you don't use your emotion. Don't think about family, emotion, all these things. Just think about it logically. It's very easy to come to the you know conclusion. It's not from God. Um, I think Islam it bring it's it holds people by their heart because your mom, you know, your dad, they love Islam, they eat things, uh, all these good experiences they link with Islam. Um, but actually, if there's no truth in it, it's all just emotion. Oke, 
and family and heritage and all that. Ya, jadi kalau kita tidak berpikir secara emosional ya, tapi kita berpikir dengan logika kita, kita ya, malah kita, kita tahu bahwa Islam ini uh, keliru, keliru gitu ya. ya. Jadi, jadi uh, sebenarnya Islam ini membelenggu orang di dalam hatinya karena ya secara emosional gitu ya, karena keluarganya Islam, ibunya Islam, bapaknya Islam, jadi ya secara emosional mereka terikat sehingga mereka takut uh, untuk menyatakan imannya. Ya, yeah, oke. Okay, uh, next question, Adam Seeker. Hi sister, daughter of Christ. Uh, Hi brother, how are you? Lord. I am doing very well. Nice to finally have a discussion with you. Praise Lord. I'm an ex-Muslim as well already. So by the way, yes, uh, if Allah couldn't do anything with Kurtumanis who actually stole the black stone of Kaaba, <laughs> stood in the middle, <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't say anything to anyone else. He has no power. He had only power when Kaaba was filled with all the idols. Yeah. So sister, uh, I have two basic things probably you would be able to answer uh, one of them is the questions in the grave because the first question that will be asked in the grave is about your shahada and prayer mm -hmm. uh, and the problem here is if the ruh is taken out of your body how will you be questioned uh, when you just have a meat piece of meat in the grave and i was not able to find this answer anywhere so maybe you as a native speaker arabic you probably would have some better answer for that um there is a hadith that talks about this brother um this is in i'm just getting it for you i'll share my screen actually it might be easier um yeah you're right it makes no sense but then everything else in islam doesn't make sense so try and <laughs> switch your brain off to get the answer so that's the <laughs> Um, so here is a very long story. Mishkat al Masabih 131, that's the reference. It says, two angels will come to him. So that's the man when he dies. They'll sit him up. They'll ask him who his Lord is. So the first question is, Man Rabbuk, who's your Lord? Uh, and then they'll ask him, Madinuk, what's your religion? That's the second question. And then he'll, he'll reply, uh, My religion is Islam. They will ask him about, who is the man who was sent on a mission among you? Among you, And he will reply, Rasulullah. So if he gets these three questions right, um, then someone will call from heaven, my servant has spoken the truth, so spread a bed for him from paradise, clothe him from paradise, and open the door from him for paradise. So um, that doesn't help. That doesn't say how um, the, the, the soul will come back to the body. He is... Uh, it is just a corpse, you know, in the grave. But anyway. Exactly. Because like the problem is that, you know, there are multiple hadiths where the angel is taking your soul from your feet and it's yeah. just ripping you apart when the soul is taking off if you are a bad person and it will yes. go out smoothly like a silk if you are a good person. But like soul is already taken. So who yeah. is asking so, question? <laughs> well, according to Muslims, the soul will go back in and out. So here, even in this hadith, it says his spirit will be restored to him. So even if you think about it, all the torture in the grave, um, you have to have a soul to feel the torture. Uh, like here, they it says here, the grave will become restricted so that his ribs will be pressed together. This is if you don't know the answer to the questions. And Correct. people will, uh, I'm sorry, an angel with a sledgehammer will hit you. This is a very uh, funny story, sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and so, what about people who died, uh, you know, uh, rip apart? Like, how can you sit the body? Like, the angels, uh, you know, make the body sit when you yes. have the whole body inside you. But what about uh, people whose uh, his body died and scattered everywhere in pieces? How can they, they uh, how can yeah. you make him sit up? <laughs> <laughs> a good question. Good question. And what the reason is, sister, is uh, the question is why all this? Because everybody will be judged anyway at the end. So why do they need all these extra stories happening in the grave? Mm -hmm. Why are the angels asking? This is Allah's work, isn't this Allah's job in day of judgment? You remind me that I have another <laughs> question, but uh, maybe I I can translate it first for you, Adam. Yeah. Sure, please, sister. Yeah, jadi uh, tadi brother kita Adam bertanya gitu. Ya, mengenai siksa kubur gitu ya uh, siksa kubur ini kan uh, bagaimana mungkin gitu ya karena kalau uh, rohnya itu kan sudah diangkat ya, jiwanya itu kan sudah dipisahkan yang di dalam kuburan itu kan cuma mayat gitu loh 
cuma mayat kok masih bisa ditanyain gitu loh dari mana ini ditanyain kan rohnya udah nggak ada jiwanya udah nggak ada jadi cuma tubuh doang gitu nah tadi uh, dokter ofres uh, memperlihatkan satu hadis katakan uh, ada dua malaikat nanti bakal datang ya nangkir dan mungkar itu kemudian mayatnya ini didudukkan kembali kemudian ditanyain siapa nama robmu, siapa nama Tuhanmu, apa agamamu, siapa yang diutus ke tengah-tengah umat gitu ya. Mereka harus membawa Rasulullah. Kalau tiga pertanyaan ini benar ya, ya nggak jadi disiksa kubur gitu ya. Tapi kalau nggak bisa jawab nih tiga kuis ini, tiga pertanyaan ini kamu akan digebukin sama mungkar sama nangkir katanya gitu. Nah, tapi pertanyaan saya tadi begini, teman-teman. Kalau mayatnya didudukkan, ya kalau mayatnya utuh gitu, bagaimana dengan mereka yang matinya itu mayatnya kocar kacir, jadi jadi apa, jadi potongan-potongan pisis gitu. Bagaimana ini mayatnya didudukkan ditanyain lagi sama mungkar sama nangkir, gitu kan? Terus apa jiwanya itu dibalikin lagi di dalam kubur, dihidupin lagi, kayak gitu. Jadi ini nggak uh, masuk di akal ya. Dan uh, Dr. Ofres tadi mengatakan, tapi pertanyaannya adalah untuk apa gitu? Ada siksa kubur ini kan di hari penghakiman nanti juga ditanya. Uh, I remember one thing, maybe Adam Seeker or Dr. of Christ, yeah, you can. Uh, 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 answer my question also in uh, Surah Maryam verse uh, 71 mm. that uh, all the Muslims are uh, predestined or destined uh, to go to hell, right? Yes. So, yeah, when I ask a Muslim, uh, he explains Sorry, sister, I lost you there a second. Hello? I think it's uh, her bad connection probably. Hang on. Yeah, we lost of we wait wait a second. Then to us that all the Muslim will go to hell first to sins in uh, in hell. They don't 5000 years, 500 years uh, put their sin or to make a uh, they pay their sins uh, so they have to go uh, in hell and then uh, they will ask in the judgment day they will have your uh, your um uh uh in the judgment day uh, Allah will still Uh, judge you, mm-hmm. right? So in in Padang Masyar, I think in Masyar, like you said before, uh, we we'll have a scale your good mm-hmm. this and your bad this. So I asked the Muslim, if you already paid your sins for 500 years or I don't know how many years you will in hell, and then Allah uh, will save you to go in heaven. Why you still be judged for uh why 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 Allah will still scale your you know good deeds and bad deeds eventually you already paid your sins it's a stupid <laughs> right <laughs> it's a exactly. stupid thing why exactly. why in the judgment day so so uh, according to your logic all the muslims will go to heaven because you already paid your sins in hell mm-hmm. so right if you already paid your sins in hell Why you still need the judgment day? You don't have to 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 need Allah to judge you. You you have a passport to go to heaven, right? Exactly, sister. So um, it doesn't it, make sense. It, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Why then be Muslim at all if you're still gonna go to hell? Because it says here, look, sister, the verses you were talking about. We're fully aware of those most deserving to scorch in it. So here it's talking about hell. So people are going to scorch. Scorch means to burn. And then it says, there is not one of you, but will go down into it. Which means all of you will go to hell. And then they will rescue those who are devout. So those who are good will be rescued. So everybody goes to hell, every single person, even the jihadis <laughs> that were, me and my brother were talking about the other the other time. That includes them too. But then, once they go in, they'll come out. Makes yeah, no sense. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I really have to go. I ask why you have you all have to go to hell. Yeah, we all have to go to hell to pay our sins. That's it. If you already paid your sins, why Allah will judge you and only like scale your goodness and bad this eventually you you already have a passport to go to heaven because you already paid your sins, right? And yeah. also, especially that uh, Allah will have the Jews and Christians take your places in hell. Oh, so what's the yeah. point of they take places in hell if you're still going to go to hell and then be taken out? Yeah, that's, I, <laughs> it's all messed up. Well. It's all messed up. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, our yeah. sins on uh, uh, their sins on yeah. Jews and Christians when doing the scaling, when we have a little bit 
additional sins on the scale allah will put it on the jews and the christians like yeah. that's a that's a great adal of allah anyway but but we thought that allah doesn't put sins on people who are don't deserve it and why muslims are against the sins being put on jesus if allah does the same thing <laughs> that's a very very good thing <laughs> there's no yeah. logic there's no logic Ya, ya. Ya, jadi ini saya tanyakan ya, sesuai surah Maryam ayat 71, katanya semua muslim kan harus ke neraka lebih dulu ya. Uh, kemudian kita tanyakan nih, kenapa kamu harus ke neraka lebih dulu gitu kan? Karena mereka harus mencuci dosanya gitu ya. They have to purge their sins in hell. So, jadi mereka harus mencuci dosanya dulu di neraka. Nah, kita tanyakan kalau dosamu sudah dicuci di neraka dan kamu nggak tahu di neraka selama berapa ratus tahun atau berapa ribu tahun, kenapa di hari penghakiman masih harus ditimbang lagi gitu loh, masih harus diseleksi lagi kan? Kalau kamu sudah membayar dosamu di neraka kan kamu bisa langsung masuk surga kan udah dibayar dosanya. Kenapa masih dihakimi lagi? Ya, jadi ini nggak masuk di akal. Uh, ada pertanyaan lain mungkin dari Arumi Bacin tadi ya. Silakan. Uh, Brother Adam, do you have any more question? You yeah, like uh, one more uh, for the art of Christ because, like, when I was okay. uh, in the mosque asking about how jumbled up this Quran is, I was given the narrative that Quran is written in the form of a khutbah, uh, khitab. So, hmm. but like when you read it, still it doesn't looks like it. So, like even when the when the imams are giving the khitab on, on Friday. They don't actually start reading it. They will still mix up the verses, just like any sermon in the in, in in the churches. So, what's the purpose of writing the book in so-called khutbah, which nobody can comprehend yet? You can't even give it as is in the mosque. So, did you had this kind of an interaction with some imams? Because, like at the end, I was always given five one on one. Hey, don't ask question because now Muhammad is not among us. So, what did you had an experience regarding this? If you had any, um, I wasn't uh, brave enough to ask to go to the mosque and ask, uh, brother. Um, I don't know. Maybe you're braver than me. Uh, okay. Yes, you don't ask questions. Uh, it is not like a khutbah. I disagree. A khutbah it at least makes some sense. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Quran makes no sense. Um, and I give you an example. Um, I'll just share my screen again. Surah Yasin yes. talks about, um, let me see if I can. Uh, Surah Yasin talks about, I'll um, just push this up. For example, we sent them two messengers, but they denied them both. So we reinforced them with a third and they said, we are messengers to you. Who's the two messengers? You have to go to Ibn Kathir for that. Who's the third? This a khutbah is better than this. A khutbah at least will tell me who the two messengers are, who the third is, and what happened. What happened before? What happened after? <laughs> it just throws this in the middle of the surah. Like me, I'm reading the Quran, Quran being a good Muslim, and then I just I'm like, what is this talking about? Who 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 are you talking about? And um, I would say any khutbah is better than the Quran. And um, I would say that um, when I came to the real God and I read his word, it tells you in which uh, which year, which month, which geographical area, the names of the king, the names of the people, what happened in order. It doesn't just throw something in the middle like this. <laughs> so I would say khutbahs are better than the Quran. Because they talk like a normal person, not like a schizophrenic person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I was rightly thrown out of three mosques, so yeah. <laughs> ya, jadi teman-teman tadi Adam bertanya ya kepada Doctor of Christ gitu, khotbah itu harusnya lebih bagus daripada Quran. Ya, contohnya tadi dikatakan di surat Yasin tadi ya, uh, ada utusan yang pertama, utusan yang kedua, dan kami meng- menguatkannya dengan utusan yang ketiga. Nah, kalau kita baca ini kita sebagai muslim Dr. Ofra bertanya ini siapa sih gitu yang dimaksud gitu ya siapa utusan yang pertama siapa yang ketiga nggak jelas banget gitu ya dan kalau khotbah itu pasti lebih baik karena khotbah itu lebih runtut gitu ya kita tahu apa yang diomongkan tetapi nggak 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 seperti Quran gitu ya Quran tiba-tiba langsung dilempar ini kayak ayat yang nggak uh, entah dari mana dapatnya ayat ini gitu tiba-tiba uh, langsung ada di tengah-tengah uh, surah Yasin ini dan 
ini siapa apa yang terjadi sebelumnya gitu dia nggak tahu ini apa sih yang terjadi sebelumnya kenapa diutus ada tiga utusan ini siapa gitu ya terus apa yang terjadi sesudahnya itu nggak ada hubungannya dan kalau kita baca Alkitab kata Doctor of Christ itu dijelaskan gitu ya bahkan dijelaskan kadang tanggalnya tempatnya jelas kejadiannya di mana pada waktu itu apa yang terjadi itu jelas semua gitu kejadiannya jadi kita bisa secara logika kita bisa tahu ceritanya gitu loh nggak asal main lempar aja nih ayat-ayat dan kita nggak ngerti ini apa Jadi khotbah lebih bagus nih daripada dia baca Quran. Adam, is that all? Or you want to ask that the question, Adam? No, thank you so very much. That would be all. Thank you, daughter of Christ. Praise Lord for you coming to Christ, Lord. Thank you, and same for you, brother. And thank you, Sophia. Oke, okay, ya. Yeah. Uh, udah dua jam nih, teman-teman. Ada yang mau tanya lagi nggak ya? Saya rasa uh, gimana, Pak YP? Silakan. It's been two hours, sister. Oke, uh, one, one more, more question. Yeah. Oke, okay. ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Chat, oh chat. What's the question? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, there are uh, people in the chat uh, ask question from audience in YouTube. What does the C for mean in Arabic? And uh, what about a plotter? Maybe so it's uh, connected. Yeah, uh, it's question from the audience. Mm -hmm. What does deceiver mean in Arabic, and what about plotter? I think is concerned about the Cairo Makirin, right? Yeah, Makirin. So Makir in okay. Arabic, Makir and Makirin means deceivers. Um, we use it like you know the fox. The fox is a, a deceiving fox, animal. Yeah. We we call um a thalab al makar the deceiving fox. It's the same word. Oke, okay, jadi uh, makir ya, mak makirin makar itu di dalam uh, bahasa Arab itu artinya uh, penipu ya, penyesat gitu. Uh, kita, kita menggunakan istilah seperti uh, serigala ya, seperti fox ya, serigala. Jadi uh, licik gitu, licik kayak serigala gitu, liciknya itu kayak serigala. You would find some Muslim saying it's planner. That's not right. Yeah. Muslim berkata ini pembuat rencana ya atau pembuat uh, pembalas itu itu nggak nggak benar ya. Because you don't need to deceive when you plan someone to, when you plan something. Hmm, karena kita tidak perlu menipu sih kalau kita tuh bikin rencana ya kalau kita bikin rencana kan belum tentu kita mau menipu ya. Um, so uh, it's it's you'll find that the translations don't um, they will try to you know. make it different uh, yeah, i'm just sorry yeah. sister i'll just yeah, get it to yeah please go on uh, doctor uh, dictionary the lane's lexicon okay ini kita mau lihat kamus ya kamus bahasa arabnya lexicon bahasa arabnya can you see here lexicon quranic words ya yeah, ini uh, kamus bahasa quran arab maker ini kita see lihat what? kata makar Deceit, deceit, apa nih bu? Deceitful, uh, guileful, artful, crafty, cunning. Oh, penyesat, licik, uh, yeah, crafty, yeah, same, 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 yeah, word. Yeah. Yeah, same, same word, same word, yeah. So it's someone who goes around in a way that you know to trick you, yeah. Hmm, ini seseorang yang mau menjebak kamu ya. So please show, licik. please show them this mm -hmm. if they question you. Oh, maybe you can post the link in the chat. I think it's very yes. Uh, useful. Yes. Um, yeah, teman-teman, ini dia akan post uh, link uh, leksikon bahasa Arab kalau teman-teman membutuhkan ya. Jadi kita bisa tahu bahasa Arabnya dari uh, sini. It is in Arabic or we have yeah, this no is, Arabic? Uh, no, oh, all have you need copy paste. Copy I've, paste co I've copied and pasted it in the chat. Um, for you. Um, okay. Or I can send it to you, sister. Um, or you to Lia, you Lianto. Okay, you can send to uh, Mr. Yepe. Yeah, it's just because it looks the word looks the same as in the verse, so they can't they can't run away from it. Mm -hmm. Jadi kalau teman-teman mau jangan dibohongi sama Muslim ya bisa nanti kita tunjukkan dari website ini ini adalah leksikon Arab. Yeah. And by the way, daughter of Christ, if you open chapter number eighty six, verse number sixteen um, and seventeen. Uh, Yahid Allah is uh, is doing the scheming slash plotting. That's the more closer word towards scheming slash plotting, correct? Because like you are an Arabic speaker as well, so don't yeah. you think there would be a more closer word for that rather than makar. 
Um, Mecker means to, uh, like we, we show, to, yeah, to scheme in a deceitful way. Like say, if, if I'm against you and I want to plan something, scheme something against you, yeah? Um, to trick you in some way. So, yes, so in uh, the surah that you said, verse 15, uh, they plot and scheme. So Allah is saying that they're bad for doing this. And then he says, and I plot and scheme. Yes, verse number 17. <laughs> Allah is the yes, so he's, he's doing the same thing that they're bad. Remember, they're bad for doing this. They plot and scheme. And I plot and scheme. So he's doing the bad thing. That, so it's... Um, uh, this is a different word to maker. This is yakidun. Yakidun means it's exactly that. This is not maker, but it's bad still. It's to scheme, plan something bad, evil. So they do evil and Allah does evil. Same thing here. Yeah, jadi kata, kata makar ini di surah 15 ini, uh, artinya negatif ya. Jadi uh, mereka merencanakan sesuatu untuk menjebak gitu ya, kayak menipu gitu ya, merencanakan sesuatu yang jahat. Itu artinya makar gitu ya. Dan uh, kalau Allah mengatakan di sini mereka menipu, Ya, mereka membuat rencana dan menipu. Ini udah perbuatan yang buruk kata Allah. Ini ini perbuatannya jahat. Tetapi Allah berkata, aku juga membuat rencana dan menipu. Jadi Allah melakukan hal yang sama di sini. Ya, yeah. so he is no better than the kafirs. <laughs> Jadi Allah nggak nggak lebih baik ya daripada orang-orang. Uh, kafir ini yang nggak percaya ya karena Allah melakukan hal yang sama nih jadi mereka menipu dan membuat rencana kata Allah ini jahat gitu ya tapi kok Allah bisa melakukan hal yang sama nih Allah malah malah menipu juga nih gitu kan berarti Allah berbuat jahat juga nih oke okay, uh, maybe this is last question right uh, Pak Ferry masih mau tanya ya boleh satu lagi kalau bisa oke okay, oke okay, silakan sedih Okay, uh, one more sister, uh, maybe still related to previous question, maybe you can explain a little bit about the, one of the six principles in Islam about the predestination, maybe still related to previous question. Yeah, uh, so uh, predestination. in predestination, there, so there's six pillars in Iman, Iman is faith, so the sixth pillar, like you said brother, is the Qadr, which is predestination. Predestination means that everything is written. So everything that happens is written. Allah already planned everything. Like even our conversation now is written. Uh, so whether or not people go are guided or misguided is written. Whether they go to hell or heaven is written. Then there's nothing we can do about it. Even they do good, do good deeds, or everything anything. is everything is from Allah. I'm just finding a, a hadith that supports this, that tells this. Um, if you can translate, sister, until I find it. Um, okay, tadi uh, Pak Ferry bertanya enam pilar di dalam iman ya, Pak ya? Iya, yeah, iya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Predestinasi ya. Predestinations, yeah. Sister, this is Sahih al-Bukhari 6595. Just FYI. Sahih al-Bukhari? 6595. Maybe one day Adam and daughter of Christ can collaborate. <laughs> Amen. I wish she could come to my channel sometime soon as well. Okay, so here it is. Oh yes, well done brother. So I'll just share it for everyone to see what Brother Adam has just told me. You see this? The Prophet said, Allah puts an angel in the uh, charge of the uterus. Okay. Allah. So it, it, in every womb, Allah has an angel there. <laughs> Wow, really? I, yeah. I, I hesitate to translate. It's very strange. No, I'm so, I'm sorry, sister. I'm sorry to everyone listening. And, yeah, because in Indonesia is very strange. Allah puts an angel in charge of the. Jadi Allah itu menaruh malaikatnya di setiap rahim. <laughs> <laughs> so is, get ready, sis. Get ready, sister, because it's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's getting worse right here. <laughs> so um, I, I, you know, this is the first time I read this, and you know. You know, <laughs> if I'm a Muslim, I will, you know, immediately yeah. I become a Murtadin. 
<laughs> well, that's that's what we're hoping. Well, Muslims wouldn't know about this system. That's why we want to tell them. So, yeah, anyway, let's just say that there's a baby now. And, but like um, there are other things that the angel is looking at, sister. Like this is really very derogatory, very but, very derogatory. But this is Islam, what sister. is the angel doing inside of my uterus? Yes, he's all the way inside, like all well, the way inside. <laughs> and he said, and he's speaking. He's talking to God from there. He's saying, "Oh Lord, never mind." And then he says, "It's a piece of flesh," as if he doesn't know. And then, if Allah wishes to complete His creation. The angel asks, oh, will it be male or female? So he tells him, it, will it be an evil doer or a blessed doer? So that means, shaqi am said in the Arabic, means unfortunate or fortunate. So that means, will he, they end up in hell or heaven? So Allah already decides while you're in the womb, what will happen to you? What your age will be? Again, nothing, nothing that you can do about it. And it's written while the creature is still in the mother's womb. This is predestination, brother. Ya, ini adalah takdir ya atau predestinasi tadi. Dikatakan uh, di uh, hadis yang diriwayatkan Anas bin Malik ini Nabi Allah itu berkata, ya, Allah itu menempatkan malaikatnya ya di dalam rahim. Dan malaikat itu akan berkata, oh Tuhan, ini ada air mani gitu kan? Terus, I'm sorry, this is so funny. Oh Tuhan. Ini adalah gumpalan da darah gitu ya, uh, it's a clot, uh, dan dia bilang kata, oh Tuhan ini uh, adalah uh, sebong sebongkah daging, kayak gitu, ya ini kayaknya Allah nggak tahu gitu ya apa yang terjadi sehingga malaikatnya harus laporan gitu ya kan. Kemudian uh, kalau Allah mau uh, menyempurnakan ciptaannya, ya kan, terus kemudian malaikat ini bertanya lagi, Uh, oh Tuhan, apakah akan jadi perempuan atau laki-laki? Katanya kan, apakah dia akan uh, menjadi pe apa, apa pembuat kejahatan atau dia akan menjadi orang yang baik gitu ya? Apakah dia akan jadi orang jahat atau orang yang baik? Uh, dia akan kaya atau enggak gitu ya? Atau dia akan miskin atau kaya kayak gitu ya? Terus uh, berapa nih usianya? Dan nah, semuanya ini sudah dituliskan sementara makhluk itu masih ada di dalam rahim uh, ibunya. <laughs> Oke. Okay. Si sister Sahih Bukhari. Sahih I mean, Bukhari. I can. Ya, yeah, ya yeah, ini ada di saya Al Bukhari. I mean, I can I can understand the predestination, but what is angel doing in my uterus? I cannot imagine. And why he see is well, it Allah, is Allah put Allah put him there. <laughs> Allah puts uh, the devil inside your nose and inside your ears. He well, Allah me. does That's also. I think so Allah strange. likes cartoons, so he likes to put these things in there. Iya, yeah, um, maksudnya apa yang malaikat itu kerjakan di dalam rahim seorang perempuan gitu loh. Bagaimana malaikat itu masuk ke dalam rahim kita gitu loh. Dan saya tadi tanyakan uh, apa iblis itu kan juga masuk di dalam hidung muslim ya, tinggalnya di dalam. By the way, uh, by the way, Allah doesn't yeah. Allah puts the Satan in your nose, but in your ear he just urinates. So there's a difference. He's not in your ear, he's in your nose, but urinates in your ear. So these he, are two hadith that you're mixing. He goes to the your ear to for toilet and then goes yeah. back to the nose. Yeah, when oh, the adhan, adhan happens, <laughs> yeah, when the adhan happens, he goes to your ear and he urinates in your ear so that you won't hear the adhan, which is azan. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Allah Allah. So, <laughs> but the, so, the question yeah. is here, Actually, going back to predestination, if he already said to the angel, if I'm going to be an evildoer, or he already decides, why does he put me in hell then? Uh, for that, read Quran 7, 178 and 179. That's a, that, that we can destroy from Quran only. So it's not, it's not your fault if you go to hell. It's Allah's. He's the one who told his angel that's in the way. Yeah, so, uh, Sister, open 178 and 179. Quran chapter number 7, 178, 179. Mm -hmm. Jadi, tadi Dr. Ofres berkata ya, kalau Allah itu sudah menetapkan dari dalam rahim, kamu akan jadi orang baik atau orang jahat, ya kenapa lagi gitu, kamu harus uh, berusaha untuk masuk surga, kan kamu udah ditetapin, jadi bukan kesalahanmu kalau kamu jadi orang jahat. Seperti itu. Sister, is that the provision here means uh, how many huris you will get in Jannah? Someone asks you. Yeah. No, provision means like how much money will you have in this life? Will you be poor? Yeah. Will you be rich? That kind okay. of thing. Yeah, that's what I translated. Yeah. Uh, jadi, uh, yeah. persediaan di sini bukan berapa uh, bidadari ya yang akan kamu dapatkan di surga, tetapi apakah kamu akan jadi kaya atau miskin gitu ya. Mengenai ini masalah harta. So this is what Brother Adam Siko was talking about. 
whom, whomever Allah guides is the guided one and whomever he sends astray, they are the losers. So he does everything. He chooses everything. And he sends mm. astray. That's, that was my big, big problem when yes. I was asking the Imas. Like, first he is sending me astray and then in the next verse, he said he is going to put me hell and will ask me question about it in verse number 178. Uh, 179. So, if he's sending me astray, how can he ask me question? Because then he should ask himself question that yeah. he has sent me astray. You know. So, 78 and 178 and 179 both combined is a huge problem. Uh, was a huge problem for me. Absolutely, and it's not just there. This uh, the Quran is full of these. Sorry, sister, you can um, translate if you like. Yeah, that's that's okay. Uh, 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 jadi tadi uh, dikatakannya oleh uh, uh, Adam tadi buka surah 7 ayat 17178 ya. Jadi uh, Allah itu sudah uh, Allah akan menuntun siapa yang dia kehendaki dan Allah akan menyesatkan siapa yang dia kehendaki. Nah, ini jadi masalah nih buat uh, Adam gitu ya. Kalau dia men menuntun saya untuk apa dia menyesatkan saya atau tidak menunjukkan jalan kepada saya, kenapa dia masih harus menghakimi saya gitu ketika nanti di uh, di pada waktu saya mati gitu ya kan dia yang menyesatkan saya gitu kok saya masih harus diminta pertanggungan jawab ya yeah, oke okay. yeah. and he does this not just to people he does it to whole towns when we decide to destroy a town we command its affluent ones to, to transgress that means we make them do wrong so when they do wrong he destroys them so he decides he makes them do wrong and then he destroys them completely okay what surah is this uh, this is surah 17 verse 16 Ya, ini surah uh, 17 ayat 16 ya dikatakan ketika uh, Allah itu uh, memutuskan untuk menghancurkan suatu kota ya di sini dikatakan juga uh, Allah itu ternyata apa ya tidak menunjukkan jalan kepada orang yang jahat gitu ya. Jadi dia malah uh, memberikan uh, perintah gitu ya. Uh, jadi dia menyesatkan di sini dan dia menghancurkan kota itu padahal uh, Allah sendiri ini yang menetapkan mereka untuk berbuat jahat di sini. This is the God of Islam. Oke, okay, teman-teman. Pak Yepe bagaimana, Pak? Oke. Okay. Silakan Su Sofi, udah 2 jam lebih ya. Nice like being yeah, yeah. two hours. Daughter of Christ. Thank you so much. Yeah. I enjoyed I enjoyed uh, speaking with all of you. It's been a lovely yeah. time. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Bu Sofi silakan. Uh, Bu Linsi mau nutup dengan doa atau ada hal lain, teman-teman? Ya, yeah, maybe daughter of Christ, uh, we can uh, make another live show together with you or Adam Seeker. I think Brother Adam has already been with us uh, twice, I believe. Okay, lovely to yeah. see you. Yeah. We also enjoy your video, uh, uh, Brother Adam, about uh, why Allah uh, protect the Kaaba. Well, it was a pagan, uh, pagan site, uh, and then Allah did not protect the Kaaba when it was a Muslims, right? Yeah, that that's that's a that's a big question. Uh, that this is this is the question which I probed him to in in a Hanafi uh, mosque because me living in Pakistan, I used to go into every mosque. I don't care. Like I used to travel a lot, and I used to go every mosque, and he was giving a sermon on. And after the Friday prayer, I sat with him, and um, it it went pretty bad for me. Like I literally had to almost run away from the mosque. <laughs> okay. So yeah, it's a like me being a male in Pakistan who already was given so many authorities, um, coming from a. <laughs> <laughs> forget the rest of the part but like like i i had a stiff neck anyways mm, you are very stiff neck yes. head hat okay <laughs> now the jesus soften your heart <laughs> praise lord praise lord yeah okay mm -hmm. Uh, mungkin nanti lain kali ya teman-teman kita sudah sudahi dulu ya teman-teman ya udah 2 jam nanti daughter of christ uh, what time is it in your in your, in your time, Daughter of Christ. Uh, it's 4.20 here, so it must be very late for you. So thank you for staying up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I think uh, you should have uh, lunch right now. <laughs> yes. And you probably <laughs> go to bed, I think. 
Yeah, it's like almost uh, 12, uh, 12 o'clock in night, in the middle of the night. Of the night. Yeah, uh, terima kasih. Thank you, daughter of Christ. Maybe we, we will have you back another time. And uh, we're very thankful because uh, you spare your time for us in Indonesia and you become a blast for us. Okay, I hope you will come next time <laughs> with us yes. again. Yes, I've been yeah. blessed with you, all of you as well. Uh, I love all yeah. my brothers and sisters in Christ. And we pray for Indonesia too. Yeah, thank you thank for you. your ministry thank to us. Thank you, okay. Adam Seeker. Okay. Uh, okay, take care, sister. Okay, bye. Bye. Uh, sister. bye. Thank you, yeah. sister. Yeah, bisa ucapkan. Uh, thank you, teman-teman. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Brothers, Adam. A lot of thank thanks to Dr. Christ for coming in. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah, it will be in English. Do you want me to pray in English? That's okay. Yeah, don't don't pray it. Don't pray it in your uh, uh, Urdu. We cannot understand <laughs> you. <laughs> sure thing. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Thank you, Father, for this blessed time that you have given us. Lord, allow this session that we have done live, that daughter of Christ has come up and given her time to show the deceptions. Lord, use this session for our Muslim friends and families that they would see and they would get out of this darkness, Lord. Lord, allow them to see what evil is in this, Lord. Lord, thank you so very much for this family that you have given me in you, Lord. Lord, allow each and every member of this family to be healthy in spirit and in bodily. Lord, please fulfill all the wishes and prayers of these friends and families, Lord, which they have asked you in Jesus' name because your promise has to come and fulfill, Lord. Lord, thank you so very much for what we have, what you have done in our life. No matter what we could do for you is never enough, but by your own grace, we are saved, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the salvation that you have given to us, Lord. Lord, thank you so very much for coming down to us, which you would not need it, but you came down because we, you loved us. Your love was sufficient for us, yet you came down, you took upon our sins and transgressions, and you gave your own ultimate sacrifice on the cross, Lord. Lord Jesus, thank you so very much for this thing that you have done for us, Lord. Lord, this ultimate sacrifice, Lord. Lord, thank you so very much for that, Lord. By your blood, we are saved, Lord. Lord, we pray that we will bring many towards the kingdom of you, Lord. In your kingdom, Lord, use us mightily among these people, Lord, so that they would come the family of you, Lord, because this is your family. We are your family. The one sheep that is lost instead of 99, you go towards them. If they find the truth, the truth will run towards them because the truth is in you, Lord. Thank you so very much for this blessed time. By, by your name, I close, Lord. Amen. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Akbar Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Thank amen. you. Amen.